are in the full swing of spring. Tradition Field, home of the Mets, and yeah, there's some enemy fans as well. But the little kids, oh, they're ready to rock and roll for some afternoon baseball. Fans have their tickets ready to go today here at Tradition Field, where it is a bit breezy, but the sun is shining. And we have spring training baseball here on SNY, presented by City, as the New York Mets host the St. Louis Cardinals here from Tradition Field in Port St. Lucie. And as I know, you're still digging out of the snow and cold back home. Yes, it is sunny here in Florida. Sorry, we don't mean to rub it in. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the broadcast. Alongside Ron Darling, I'm Kevin Burkhardt, Hall of Famer Ralph Kiner will join us a little bit later. And Ronnie, a little bit different field today. A lot of the Mets gone to the World Baseball Classic. We'll get to that in a moment. But I think the most important thing about today is the starting pitcher. It's Freddie Garcia who gets his second chance to impress. Yeah, it really is. And he really did not impress in his first time out there. Only two-thirds of an inning. He walked three. And I think the thing with Garcia is he told Jerry Manuel, you know what? I just did, never got comfortable, never felt good out there. And I think for Jerry Manuel, he's decided to put him to start where he's had done 266 times in his career. He's also had had lots of K's. The problem with him is used to be he's don't count anymore. Now that LeVon Hernandez has pitched well and pitches tomorrow. And of course, Tim Redding is slated back on March 8th. So he's going to have to do a lot better today for Dan Worth and, and Jerry Manning. And, and it's a role he's not used to. A guy that has been notoriously a slow starter now has to ramp it up in his second spring start. We'll see how he adjusts today. Meanwhile, talk about adjusting. Jerry Manuel is adjusting, Ryan, because the Mets lost 15 players to the World Baseball Classic. That's the most of anybody in the league and with that said what do we look for now in spring training the next couple of weeks yeah and six to even the Puerto Rican team so you know really the thing about the Mets what do you look for I think it's great you might see guys like Bobby Kilty who's fighting for a place on the bench he's going to get a lot more play uh, guys like Fernando Tatis who's hitting cleanup today um, so it's going to look like the Mets maybe in 1975 with some of the guys that used to sit on the bench but now be starting but it's good to see those guys play and it gives the pitchers a little more eyesight too and so the Mets whose offense has been unbelievable this off this spring, I should say. They'll look to keep it going. They host the St. Louis Cardinals today from sunny Florida and Tradition Field. Freddie Garcia on the mound. Well, the first pitch coming up next. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by City and by Delta and by Pepsi. Well, City Field, your new world-class home awaits you. Be a part of the inaugural season at City Field in the new home of Mazes with your 2009 Mets season tickets and plans. Get to Mets.com or call 718-507-TIXX for your tickets now. Operators are standing by. Tony La Russa and the Cardinals are here. They've beaten the Mets six straight times in Grapefruit League action, and they will face Freddie Garcia looking to rebound from a tough first spring start. We'll see if he can do it when we come back. First pitch is coming up. Strawberry in camp for the Nets for the next next week or so with some special instruction. It's so good to see him. He still looks like he could play the game. <laughs> the type of shape he's in. Let's check out the lineups presented by City. There you see the man, the MVP. Look at those numbers. Maybe his best yet in the bigs. 357, 116 runs better than that, all with a supposedly bad elbow. It's just amazing what Albert Pujols has been able to do. I know. He's had a nerve replaced, right? He's yeah. going to face Freddie Garcia. What a pedigree on Freddie. 200. 265 games started in the big leagues, 1,264 strikeouts, seven times with double figures, but those things were all washed away here in spring training as he's fighting for his life. And so Garcia, maybe the difference today, Ronnie, will be that he is starting the game. You know, he, he came in after Levon Hernandez, certainly another role that's a little bit uh, different for him. So in, in trying to get him a little bit more comfortable, Jerry Manuel starts him today. Does that make a difference? It, it does, and I think Jerry is trying to put all of his people, of course, who are in camp and trying to win jobs in the best possible situation so they can shine. And this is the best possible situation for Garcia. Now, if he doesn't shine, the, you know, the light bulb has to go over Jerry's head and go, boy, you know, I don't know where we go with this. Yeah, well, it's a big star for Freddie Garcia in his uh, quest to 
win a spot on this team facing Colby Rasmus to start it off here. Rasmus is center fielder for the Cards, who is their number one prospect. And it's been kind of an up and down story for Rasmus so far. He had an unbelievable spring last year and maybe thoughts about him making the team last year. Well, he didn't. He went down to AAA. He started off slow. He got hurt. He rebounded a little bit, was not a September call-up, and here he is struggling at the start of this spring. Which I think was a message to him to say, you know what, you've been up and down this year. The can't miss might be gone. Garcia paints the outside corner, so he's got Rasmus one and two. His problem is Ankeel, Rick Ankeel in center field, the Fort Pierce product, Port St. Lucie product, has done such a nice job out there. Where do you play Rasmus? Nice breaking ball by Freddy Garcia, and Rasmus goes down swinging, so a good start from Freddy Garcia. Well, defensively behind Freddy today. Well, there's a swing first. Good breaking ball on that outside part. Backdoor breaking ball on March 3rd, no chance. Danny Murphy in left field, Corey Sullivan, for, for, former Colorado Rocky in center field, Church and Wright, Tatis, Coronado Castillo and Anderson, and Brian Schneider, who's got off to a, a nice start behind the dish. He's had a great start this year. He's healthy, which is a far cry from last year. Third baseman Joe Mather is at the plate, big guy who is really an outfielder, but a couple of guys in this Cardinal team are, are outfielders trying to be infielders. Mather and, and Skip Schumacher is trying to make the jump this year to second base. As that one's inside, it's one and one. In fact, Ronnie Skip, who's a great guy, had a funny quote, you know, as he tries to make that jump. He had a, an article in the St. Louis Dispatch, just one of those fun Q&As, and he was asked, what's your biggest regret, regret in life? He said, not taking infield earlier in my career. <laughs> well, you know, the whole thing is, is that these are guys that could hit Mathers, of course. One of those guys, he's a little bit like Ludwig. Ryan Ludwig, mm -hmm. who's playing right field, who kind of took him seven years to get through A ball. Kind of a late bloomer, but can really hit. Do you have a position for him? That has been the problem. I'm trying to find exactly that as Garcia upstairs. And he falls behind here three and one to Joe Mather with the big fella, Albert Pools, waiting on deck. Stroke pretty hard. Murphy on the run. Joe Mathers got himself a one-out single here in the first. Well, he had to come into him three and one. He did fastball in the inner part. Nice level swing there by Joe Mather. Nice play, too, by Danny Murphy. He looked like he was going to go for it for a while, but good instincts played it back. Gives Garcia a chance to get out of this inning, maybe by getting a ground ball. And this won't be easy against <laughs> Pujols, who just put up all kinds of crazy numbers last year. The MVP, as we showed you. Also a 462 on base percentage to add to all those home runs and RBIs and doubles and nearly a 360 average. Well, you and I were talking before, you know, Alex Rodriguez in the American League and this guy right here, Albert Pujols. It kind of, kind of is a toss-up between these two players. Pujols has made himself into a fine first baseman. He's, he's been great at first base. And the first pitch swinging and fouls right back behind us. And we'll have to bring that up with Ralph later when he joins us yeah. to see his take. If he could pick one guy, that's one of those. That's one of those talk radio debates, Ronnie. It'll be hard for him because Ralph was a right-handed hitter. They're both right-handed hitters. He loves powerful, strong right-handed yeah. hitters. I think the thing with Pujols that whenever I look at hitters and I say to myself, boy, you know, in my day when I had my good stuff, how would I get him out? I never have an answer for Ralph. <laughs> It's hard. I mean, there's not there's not many weaknesses, that's for sure. 82 from Garcia on the gun there, but a bit high. One and one to Albert Pujols. You also talked to LaRusa. He says that he does more homework of the video than anyone else. He hits in the cage more than anyone else. He hits off the tee more than anyone else on the team. And that's your best hitter. He was out here 15 minutes for the game starter, just, just hitting those, getting those soft tosses into the net. And looked out, maybe a pickoff. Mather somehow squirts back in. Regroup just in time, and Garcia did not recognize it. It's called where you're just trying to time the pitcher. He's trying to time him, timed it wrong, but Garcia stepped off, and by that time, didn't have enough on the throw to get him out of first base. Rather lucky in that circumstance. 1-1 one, one to Pujols here. That is inside. Garcia, 83. What did he top out at, 86 his first start on the fastball? Yeah, the, the, the problem happens for all pitchers that get to this part of their career after surgery is that they have to flip it over. They were fastball pitchers who would throw their breaking ball when they got ahead in the count. Now they have to throw the breaking ball when they're behind in the count. 
two one on the way and Pujols gets under one mile high. Tati shielding his eyes. It's a roll back. Can't get it. Well, let me ask you this. You mentioned that. It's a great point about Garcia, who was a power pitcher in his time with the Mariners and the White Sox. Does he have enough? His curveball, you know, he's got good movement on the curveball. Does, does he have enough, though, to kind of make that, that flip if he's only going to throw in the mid-80s? You know, it's interesting um, that, yes, he can. Only, though, if he can spot his fastball. Fastball becomes so important to guys who can't throw hard anymore. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. In, in the sense that every single time they're throwing, it's got to have a purpose. Either it has to be a strike or it's a pitch to maybe knock pulls off the plate and go away with the breaking balls. Every fastball is so important when you don't throw hard anymore. So it's 2 2 to pull holes here. And the breaking ball hit high and deep to left field. That's going to curve foul. Well, how about this? How about confidence for us from that standpoint, Ronnie? You know, you know when you're in, when he's in his prime, you know you're rearing back and you could throw by most guys on a lot of times. You get a lot of ground balls. He had that heavy ball. So how about now? Confidence level. Does it change from where you could feel like you could get it by anybody to where you feel like, okay, I have, you know, maybe an inch of margin here? I think the, I think that's the big transition. You have to check that ego in at the door. When you come in the clubhouse, that bravado that you might have had early on in your career has to be gone. And it's all about not throwing or being aggressive and striking people out, but just pitching and throwing to spots. 2-2 two, two to pull holes down low. And, well, as Albert usually does, he, he makes you work here. And now the count has gone full with Matt the runner on first. One away. He struck out Colby Rasmus. Garcia did to start the game. You know, Kevin, it's almost like when you're early in your career, you want to strut out there and let everyone see what you look like today. Later in your career, you hope you're not noticed. <laughs> we just get through this game. And he just wants to be noticed just enough to be in consideration for that fifth starter role. Big pitch for him here. 3-2 to the big fella. There goes Mather. Pujols hanging in as he's right on that one. And, you know, we talk about the fifth starter race, uh, Ron. Levon Hernandez will start tomorrow. He looked very good in his outing. Tim Redding's almost a forgotten guy here. You know, this is the guy that has the major league contract. This is the guy, you know, he had, he had a little setback with the shoulder because of a, a toe injury and maybe tried to come back too soon. But he's now throwing bullpens, as you said in the open, scheduled to throw in less than a week now. And he's kind of the, you know, forgotten guy in this mix a little bit here as Garcia looks in on another 3-2. Again, it's Mather going and now it's ball four. So Freddy Garcia working himself into trouble here in the first, and that'll bring up big Ryan Ludwig. But in, in Redding's case, with that major league contract, as we take a look at the, con the uh, candidates for that fifth starter, where does he stand, do you think, now missing this time and coming back? I think it's great for Tim Redding because the spring training is so long mm -hmm. that it's given him an extra week to get ready. So if he throws on March 8th, what's wrong with that? The game should start on the third. The season doesn't start till April 6th. So I think he's in a good spot. The Hernandez is in a good spot. Uh, Jerry Manuel said he loved how the ball was coming out of his hand. Jonathan Nice, of course, they would love him to just take that role. Sure. But he had a little struggle in his first start, but he's got plenty more to come. And so now two on for Ryan Ludwig, who had just a breakout year left. Maybe the quietest <laughs> year in the major leagues for what he accomplished. At 30 years old, he had 37 jacks, drove in 113, and hit 299. And no one talked about the guy. It's, it's pretty amazing the, the year that he had, and maybe because he was a late bloomer. Well, think about it this way. He started the year on the bench. So, you know, he wasn't even considered by the manager a great uh, as the guy who was going to be their starter. But it really started, to tell you the truth, in 07 when he came up. Got over 300 at-bats. He had 287. That's when it started to feel for him that he finally was going to have a shot. 1-1 one, one, hit down the left field line, and that's going to go foul. So the wind, by the way, just so you know, we had a very windy game the other day. Today, it, it's not as bad, but still blowing left to right. So we'll watch the home runs to right. And there you see Garcia again really struggling with the pitch count. He threw 40 pitches, did not make it out of his one inning last time. He's got 20 pitches already, as you see the breeze, not nearly as stiff as it was the other day. And he's laboring, there's no doubt, but it is one and two to Ludwig here. And he gets him. So Garcia rebounds nicely to get Ryan Ludwig, and there's two away. Kevin, that's always nice to see, that when he gets ahead of the hitters, he still has that good enough breaking ball to get you out. 
problem for him is getting to that point where he's ahead and making them chase balls all out of the strike zone. Nice breaking ball. It's a good move. Yeah. There's, there's no question about that. And he's used it for a couple of strikeouts here in the first. And that'll bring up Chris Duncan from the left-handed side of the plate and see how Garcia attacks it with two on and two down here in the first. Starts with spinner that's a little outside. Duncan went through, well, you want to talk about a surgery. He had surgery in August to repair a herniated cervical disc in his neck. And this I've never heard of. They replaced it with a steel prosthetic. Wow. Uh, normally in that case, they, they fuse the vertebrae together, but that uh, that then limits your motion in your neck. So they, it's a steel prototype, which apparently, I didn't get a chance to talk to him today, but apparently he's got full motion. Pretty incredible. Wow, Curious, vying for a left field job. That's lucky. I've got a couple of uh, steel screws in my thumb, so welcome to the club. We have problem in the airports. That's what happens there. How do you explain that? <laughs> steel in my neck. What? He's ahead 2-0 here on Garcia. And he hits his one deep to right. It is a mile, and it is going to go. That is a bomb for Chris Duncan. Wow. A three-run home run. And the Cardinals have taken a 3-0 lead over the Mets. You don't see too many home runs back there. I mean, that was hit. And that's why this guy got a good chance here for the Cardinals with that power. Well, he gets the ball up in the strike zone, and he has that kind of power. And you know, if you watch enough games here, that right field is always troublesome. It's hard to hit home runs out there with the wind blowing in. Not so much today, but that was a bomb. You're right, Kevin. I don't think, though, Ronnie, I've seen any almost going to the concession stand. That was, that's the type of power Duncan has, though. He's got brute strength, and he showed it there. So Garcia, who looked like he was going to rebound and get out of the inning, instead gives up a three run home run and again the Cardinals giving him fits as Khalil Green bats former Padre now the Cardinals starting shortstop and this one hit to right Church retreating and hauls it in so the inning is over but the Cardinals do some major damage thanks to that guy Chris Duncan a three run home run Mets will come to bat trailing by three Welcome back to Tradition Field. Mets starting lineup today brought to you by City. There we see Ryan Church is off to a great start this spring, really swinging the bat well and, you know, kind of out to, to prove everybody again what he can be after the, the tough issues he suffered with last year with the concussions. And this guy's had a good start too. Louis Castillo, who's three for ten with three walks, who's getting on base and batting lead off and takes strike one from Kyle Loesch. And what a year he had last year. Only 78 and 80 in his career, but a reclamation project for Dave Duncan again with those 15 wins. Well, you know better than anybody. I mean, you 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 were uh, certainly pitching under him for a while. I mean, if you go down, if you started a list of the people that he took in when they came to the team that that either weren't very good or didn't have a great year, as Lowe's fields have come back or one away. I, I, don't, I wonder how many people would be at the guys that he's turned around. And they're not all starters. You know, it means the ones come to your mind. So you see the defense here first. Duncan with that big three-run home run in left field. Rasmus and Ludwig. Mather, Khalil Green, who's new at shortstop. Thurston and Pujols. And Jason LaRue, LaRue behind the plate. Um, you know, you think of Dave Stewart. You think of Bobby Welch, Storm Davis. Um, the list goes on and on. But also the relievers. Rick Honeycutt was struggling at the end of his career. Mm. He um, made his career better. And then, of course, Dennis Eckersley, who was a starter, came and Dunk said, I think you'd be great in the bullpen. He goes, I don't want to go in the bullpen. Well, Hall of Fame later. That I think, was a good I think decision. he was right. Yeah. I think he was right. I mean, the job that he did with Jeff Weaver a couple years ago when they went on their postseason run, and then he left the Cardinals, and he fell off the face of the earth. And, right. You know, so he, he works his magic, no doubt. And Loesch with a one and one here against the pitcher, Garcia. Joe Thurston will have that one for two away. You're probably asking at home, why, why is Freddie Garcia batting in the first inning? Well, what they've decided to do, they're hoping that their leadoff hitter gets on so that the pitchers can work on their bunting. But even more importantly, Jerry knows the importance of having a starter and how he can hit and handle the bat. So if you hit, hit the ninth spot, you're never going to get an at-bat. So two down, bases empty, Mets down by three on the strength of that three-run Chris Duncan home run off Freddie Garcia in the first. And here's Daniel Murphy. He's off to a good start this spring, kind of cementing his role as the left fielder. 313, 5 of 16 so far for Murph. There's a strike. You talk about Loesch 
he was out there for so long last year before he finally signed for one year and just over four million and then all he did was win a career high 15 games for the Cardinals. Down to first and Pujols makes the jog to first base. Easy inning for Kyle Loesch and the Mets are retired in order. We've played one a tradition field cards in front. Mets baseball on SNY brought to you by Bud Light with just the right taste that never fills you up. The difference is drinkability. Top two tradition field Mets and cards. We are on a breezy cool afternoon here in Florida. Three run home run by Chris Duncan off Freddie Garcia in the first. That's the difference in this one. And let's see how Garcia responds in his second inning of work against Alan Craig. The DH today. Interesting one National League team using the pitcher to hit one National League team using the DH. Using the pitcher to hit second. As uh, someone in the St. Louis paper said Jerry Manuel is out cardinaling the Cardinals. <laughs> Tony LaRusso of course known out there to bat the pitcher eighth occasionally. 2-0 to Craig here Garcia. That's a strike 85 one of his hardest thrown fastballs of the day. Lefty John Switzer warming up for the Mets. And this one hit to right deep. Church on the run, and that is going to get over the wall. A line drive home run for Alan Craig. And Freddie Garcia is having his troubles. It's four to nothing, St. Louis. Again, the problem there behind in the count, Kevin had to come in with the fastball. Craig was ready. And not a great start for Garcia. It's, it's going to be interesting. After outings like this, 2-1 pitch, up and away, same kind of fastball, up in the zone that Duncan hit. After outings like this, the manager and the pitching coach will get together and they'll evaluate what happened today and, you know, see if they can find a little silver lining here or there. But a person that's going to play a big part in this will be Brian Schneider. At some point, they'll go to him and say, hey, listen, what, is, is he a little short? Is he all right? You know, was he just missing? Um, that fair evaluation is a lot of pressure on a catcher to talk about about a pitcher who's trying to win a spot. Here's LaRue, the catcher, who cuts and misses one and one. Well, I'm sure there are plenty of games that um, at every pitcher, but you know, you're speaking of your experience, I'm sure there are plenty of games where you had where you thought, wow, I, I really pitched well, and maybe you gave up a few runs, you know? Yeah, it, 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 you want the catcher to tell you, it, what is this stuff like? Is this stuff major league level right now to get major league hitters out 34 times a year sure. or 34 starts? When it's like that, it certainly is. I mean, his breaking ball looks yeah. great, but he's getting, he's getting killed on the fastball yeah. right now. It's pretty obvious. So uh, that's where Freddie Garcia is at this point. His curveball is tremendous action, but they're hitting the fastball pretty good. One and two, and he just misses painting the corner there. Later in my career, I was still able to get hitters out just by competing. You can see the pitch total now. That is not good. But he, um, they once had a computer in spring training, and they said, boy, don't put Ron on the computer. There's no way that he's going to make the team. <laughs> they put him on the computer. <laughs> and again, the breaker and LaRue goes down. So it is a third strikeout for Garcia. Actually, it was a change, Ronnie? Yeah, I think that was a little change up there from Garcia. That's good to see that his breaking pitch and his change up are good. Um, a lot of times for pitchers, especially coming off injuries, uh, injuries the last couple of years, sometimes it takes a while in spring training to get that fastball. I know Nolan Ryan used to take him three, four weeks to get that fastball. Once he did, then lights out. So one out, and it'll start off Joe Thurston, the second baseman with a hook that's a little low. You see John Main. Speaking of guy who's coming off an injury and a guy working on his breaking ball. Had his first spring outing the other day. And nice, he just gave a solo home run. Solo home it. run to Tejada. Looked pretty good, and, and uh, Ronnie's curveball looked pretty good. He, he, he uh, fooled around with it, especially in the first inning. Had some good break on it. Key for him is that he'll have two pitches going down. Here's the line score for the spring so far for Freddie Garcia. 2-0 to Thurston here. Down to first base. Marlon Anderson will take it to the bag himself. Two away. And so we go back to the top of the order with Colby Rasmus getting his second opportunity. Strike out his first time against Garcia. 
such a different feel in the clubhouse today with all those players gone and yeah. uh, you know no Wright, no Beltran, no Delgado, no Reyes. <laughs> it's a uh, strange in some ways. But, you know, Ronnie, we talked about this before the game. I think in some ways it's actually pretty cool. You get a chance to really see some of these younger guys and, and what they can do. And and maybe, you know, you get that midseason injury. Guy makes an impression stick in Jerry Manuel's mind here. Yeah, the problem, though, for, like, the fans that plan to come down here, it's like, you know, getting tickets to the Beatles and the Monkees are playing. You that's, know what I mean? It's, uh, uh, that's an issue. <laughs> you know? That's an issue. But uh, you know what? I think I think the World Baseball Classic is great. I love how the teams uh, um, get so nationalistic playing for each other's teams. And, and the players that usually see battling each other are now buddies and giving high fives. And you know, it's going to be interesting for the Dominican team to see who's going to get more playing time at shortstop, Henley Ramirez or Jose Reyes. One, two now the count to Rasmus. And this is going to go into the crowd. Hanley Ramirez Reyes and then Tejada is the third shortstop on the team. That is an interesting mix. I wonder if they'll put one of those guys at first because Pujols is out and well you know that Tejada actually wasn't going to play because yeah. they talked about him playing at first. But I think the reason he was on the team again because Ortiz is having some problems coming back so they don't know if he can play first base. If he can't play first base he has to DH. 1-2 is outside and low, 2-2. Two two. If he DHs, Tejada can play first, but that really puts them in a bind. Because what they'd love to do is Ortiz at first, mm -hmm. uh, Reyes at short probably, and Ramirez DH. Mm -hmm. And that would be some formidable team. I think Ramirez could play first. I think he can play first base. Thank I think, God. I think someday he might play first base. First to third. 2-2 two -two on the way. and in is Rasmus. Well, they've already made the adjustment for him in the batting order. You know, he goes from leadoff to a three-hole hitter, and maybe that's the next move for him. Well, Jose Reyes is just one of those great athletes that you could put him just about anywhere, and he's going to have success. So 2-2 two -two on the way. Rasmus down to first, and Marlon Anderson handles it nicely. Over to Garcia, and the inning is over. So a better inning there for Freddy Garcia as he's through two innings of his work. One and a half in the books, 4 nothing. cards. We'll talk to the straw man, Daryl Strawberry, when we come back. First half out of the spring for Fernando Tatis, who had that bruised hand, which Jerry Manuel playfully said could have been from his 80-pitch drill. And he's getting a uh, first look. You see the great season, comeback player of the year, what he did last year for this team. And facing Kyle Loesch here in inning number two with the Mets down 4 nothing. Pleased to join in on headset down from the dugout, the straw man, Daryl Strawberry. It's with us. Uh, Daryl, it's uh, Ronnie and uh, Kevin up in the booth. How are you, man? All right. What's up, Mr. P? Uh, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. <laughs> down in the sunshine. Got out of the cold. Uh, good call by you. Is 1-1 one, one to Tatis. Back up the middle. Thurston's got the long throw in time. Well, Daryl, first tell us, you know, you're here for about a week. Uh, what, what are you going to be doing with these guys here in camp? Well, I'm just kind of roaming around, you know, working with some of the younger guys, you know, whatever they need, whatever help they need, they encourage me. You know, it's a new year. You got a new stadium coming, and you know, hopefully, uh, it'll be an exciting time for Mets fans this year. Hey, Daryl, you were under such a spotlight when you played in New York. You think you are in a unique position to help some of these young guys that are going to have their first year and, and let them know what it's like to deal with, well, I guess me and uh, other media people. <laughs> you uh, and Keithy. Yeah, Harry. that's right. That's right. <laughs> How weird does that sound to say, by the way? <laughs> well, you guys are pretty easy. It's not, you know, it's not dealing with you guys, I, I think. It's just the whole media cap capital of New York that you have to deal with, because you know how it is when you come to the ballpark there. It's different when you go on the road. Uh, you only have the beat writers, but and you have writers from the other team, and it's not many, but when you come home, it's about 50, 60 writers in your clubhouse, and you wonder, and you scramble, you know, so I think the most important thing for these guys to understand with the media is just to deal with them. You know, be up front with them. Come out when you have a good day. Come out when you have a bad day. And if you do that, you have a better chance to, you know, keeping things smooth and going smooth through, through the course of the season. But I tell you one thing I, I, I realized in New York when you play there, if you hide from them, they're going to bury you. That's just part of it. That's what they do. So you might as well get used to it. The best thing for players to do is to be able to come out and face the media and deal with it. Every day is not a great day, as we all know. Baseball is 162 ball games, and you're going to have some ups and downs. And you just got to go, be able to go with the flow of the ups and downs because it's more ups than downs. Um, downs come in between. You go through struggle periods, and I think a lot of us face that. You know that, Ronnie, and myself. 
myself and other players, Pete, we all faced that. But you know, one thing was we were we were always out front, and we'll talk about the struggles even if we went through. Three and two now to Ryan Church after fouling that one off with one out here in the second inning. Daryl, how do you um, how do you present this to the players in the sense that this like you talk about pressure? I mean, uh, yourself, Ronnie Keith, you you all know what you guys went through, played in the city, and, and succeeded in this city. Um, how do you present that to the current players in the sense that? You know, I guess what you don't want to do is, wow, what a play by Kyle Loesch in a reaction to the bullet from Church <laughs> to away. You know, I guess what I'm trying to say is in the sense that, you know, I'm sure it's kind of a fine line because you don't want to, they don't know who you are. You don't want to go up and say like, hey, you know, I was part of a world championship team and kind of boast. Right. But yet you're trying to give them the message that, look, we dealt with pressure and succeeded. You know what I mean? How do you how do you give that message and, and give it the right way? Well, I think the most important thing is, is tell them to have fun. And, and really, one thing I learned in New York is you can't take things personally. You know, even if someone's writing about you and saying that you suck, okay, maybe I do suck at the time, you know, and I went through periods like that, and I did, you know. But the best way to put that away is getting between the lines and getting the job done, what you're paid to play for and what you're paid to do. And, and, and that's what we have to do as players. And when you realize that more than anything, and stop getting caught up into, you know, reading the papers and, and, and worrying about this writer and that writer, because they're going to they're gonna do their job, you know. That's just the nature of it, you know. And players have to understand that. If they can realize that, they have a better chance. Fair ball for Marlon Anderson down the right field line. The sleek, slim Marlon Anderson. Who lost 17 pounds in the offseason. He gets a double. You know, Daryl, I ask all these guys what you mean to them to come here, and they all get a big smile, and, and they're so happy just to be around you because not only people forget, you know, I played with you in the Mets, but a lot of these players know you from your Yankee days and the success you had there with Joe and the gang. But what do you get from them by, by being here? Because I know you get something special from them too. Well, you have to get something special from these guys. You know, when you think about, you know, you played here and you come back and be a part of it and you see these guys, you remember your memories. But also at the same same time, you want them to you know, relish their moment, what they have right now, you know, a chance. You know, and the thing about it is they have a chance to win. They're not just on a team that's showing up every year. They got a chance to be in a pennant race. They got a chance to fight to get into the playoffs and, and a chance to try to get to the championship game. So when I come here, you know, I, I love being around these guys. You know, I, I think the most important thing, they understand me that I'm a player and I played the game and, and, and want to help them, want to help them achieve that next level. I, I think that's anybody goal if you, why put on a uniform if your goal is not to achieve the level to get to to be the best and get to the top and, and these guys have it they have all the ingredients of a team that's capable of doing it but you know they have to be able to go out there as a group and as a unit and play that way it's not about individual and that's what I try to let players know it's all about us as a team you know we might have bickered and, and had our little slashes but you know one thing Ronnie when we stepped on that field it was strictly business between the line it was nothing but baseball. Sure I don't know if uh, Brian Snyder will let you really answer this question it's one and two to him now with two outs we'll see how this is back goes but have you noticed a difference in camp this year as far as the lightness to it the mood well so so far it's been great you know I think Jerry's been great what, what Jerry's been doing and you know far as making the changes or switching uh, the way he's switched this ball club into you know working on different things working on situation hitting and I was talking to you earlier about that that's so important for these guys to understand because when you get in pressure situation you gotta learn to hit in those types of situations Daryl thanks for the time great to see you way to go D Daryl Strawberry Mets trailing four nothing we'll be back Get a look at the Mets' new pitcher, Freddie Garcia, out of the game. And now the lefty, John Switzer, will show us his stuff. Well, John Switzer was an Arizona State University product. Played all of last season in Pawtucket, the AAA team for the Boston Red Sox. Before that, had some big league time with the Tampa Bay Rays. See Dylan G, who Mets are very high on, their young prospect, who had a real nice year in AA last year. For now, we take a look at Switzer. Big guy, 6'3", 195 pounds. One of those lefties looking to impress and maybe sneak into this bullpen for this team. You know, I was mentioning it the other day. It's always a left-handed kind of scrum in spring training. We have all these left-handers that are fighting for a role and maybe only one spot uh, on this roster for the Mets. Joe Mather, the batter, he falls behind Mather 2-0. Oh. Let's see his motion here. Very compact. Doesn't really raise that front leg and kind of really throws all upper body. Yeah, not much leg, not much push from Switzer. 2-0, slider breaks in, 2-1. 
He would be, I guess, the opposite of left-hander Billy Wagner when you see that kind of motion. Billy, of course, with that long stride and huge push-off using those legs. And just the opposite for Switzer. Using that height a little bit out there. Coming at you. Two and one to Joe Mather here in the top of the third inning. So Freddie Garcia's day is done as he paints the quarter for two and two. Garcia, well, he struggled. Let's face it. He allowed two home runs in this one. Three run shot to Chris Duncan, a solo shot to Alan Craig. So four runs in two innings. He did have three strikeouts. Curveball looked great. Fastball had some trouble with. And Mather goes down on strike. So Switzer gets his first batter. Well, that's a good fastball here. Down and away with some good movement. Good sink on that fastball from Switzer. You know, to take you inside as Pulitz comes up, you know, Freddie Garcia had a, he had a tough two innings, but now he's got to go inside. He's got to have, you know, 12 to 15 reporters around him asking all the questions that you don't want to really answer right sure, now. You know? Sure. And he did rebound nicely in that second inning. He let up the yes. leadoff home run, Alan Craig, which snuck out of the park and then had three quick outs, three easy outs. So uh, that was a positive. You're looking for one from Freddie Garcia. It's just trying to figure out how to use that fastball to get the hitters out. Well, it'll start out light with the reporters. It'll be, how do you feel out there? Um, did you, you know, do you have any soreness? Uh, do you struggling with your physical abilities at all? And then, then they'll start hitting rock and fire. Yeah, yeah. As Daryl talked about, <laughs> just kind of take it. You know, do you have a chance to make the team? Do you think? Do you end your chances? You know, all those questions that no one really wants to answer. But in this town. Um, not Fort St. Lucie, but playing for this New York team, those are the things that you have to go through. By the way, John Switzer read your scouting report in Albert Pool, so don't give him anything <laughs> even remotely near the plate, and he walks him on four pitches. <laughs> well, you, what's very interesting here, and it, Jerry Manuel's doing this on purpose, situational lefty, he wants to see if he's a crossover kind yeah. of left-handed pitcher. So what does he do? He brings him in against Mather, Pujols, and Lutwood. What can you do against right-handed hitters, right-handed power hitters? It, Show me something. Excellent point, Ryan, because Dylan G was was slated to be the second guy in this game, and that that's 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 perfect right there. And against the big guns, this Cardinal team too. You know, think about this team. I mean, they can hit. And you look at it last year. Pujols and Keel, Ludwig and Gloss. Hit 126 homers yeah. combined. I mean, that's that's in a in a big park too. Now they're going to be without Gloss for most of the year, or a part of the year, anyways, this year because he had surgery, but still have a lot of power. I think their defense is good, not great. Mm -hmm. um, their key for them, honestly, is going to be uh, how their back of their bullpen sets up and how healthy Chris Carpenter is. It looks like he's back. So if he is, you have a Carpenter, you have a Wainwright, you have a Los, you have a Pinheiro. I mean, that's a nice staff. If their staff is healthy, they're good. As that one's a strike, so it's now one and two to Ryan Ludwig. There's no doubt. And, and look, Wainwright was hurt. He only had 20 starts last year. Wainwright and Carpenter are as good as it gets, one, two, if they're healthy. That's we, the bottom line. we forgot the fifth guy might be Todd Wellemeyer, who oh. pitched here a few days ago. He had a nice, strong year last year. One, two to Ryan Ludwig, a switzer. Just a little low. And it's two and two. And you mentioned the bullpen that, you know, last year they had all kinds of problems. Uh, Jason Isringhausen lost his job, regained his job. They tried Chris Perez, the youngster who throws about 100 miles an hour but can be a little erratic. And Ludwig is jammed here. Easy play. Marlon Anderson, two away. So, so far, so good. He's seen. Switzer come out and get Mather on a strikeout. He, um, because of discretion is the better part of Valor, walk Albert Pujols, gets Ludwig out by jamming him with a cutter inside, and now he can face the left-hander. Now we'll see what kind of situational lefty is against this guy, who in his first at bat, of course, hit a home run that he could serve meals on. Yeah, that was one of the longest home runs you'll, you'll see here, that's for sure. And he starts him off with a breaking ball in the corner, strike one. Chris Duncan, three-run shot off of Freddie Garcia in the first inning. After it looked like Garcia was going to get out of the inning, he struck out Ryan Ludwig on a nice pitch, and well, Duncan made him pay off that high fastball. Oh, here it is. Well, I heard that crack about 250 times in my career. It never gets, he always gets old, to tell you the truth, but boy, that was a shot. I, 
You know, I didn't realize how loud it was until I, <laughs> until I heard it back there. Wow. That'll tell you all you need to know. Duncan Patient does not go after that one. One and two. And Duncan's healthy. Look, he's got a lot of power. We told you about getting that steel prosthetic in his neck to replace the cervical disc. And, you yeah. know. He can hit, just adds another monster bat to this team's offense. Well, people who know him know that he is, you know, he should be a first baseman. He can't play first with Pools there, of course. So he plays kind of out of position. Great teammate, guy who hustles all the time, plays the game right. Switch has got him 2-2 here. And here's a line drive, base hit for Duncan. Pujols going to go for three. Trouble in right field is Church. Pujols going to come around and score. Ryan Church had trouble picking that one up in right field as it rolled around, and the Cardinals get a run because of it. They're up now 5-0 on the Mets. Well, this slider, not a bad pitch from Switzer. Had it on the outside part, maybe a little up. But just like a hockey player at the blue line, you're trying to keep that puck in the zone. Church wasn't able to do it, of course, Pujols. Talk about a guy who plays the game right. He's a guy who doesn't, not overly fast, but has made himself into an excellent base runner also. And he never stopped running, that's for sure. So Pujols scores. On the triple from Chris Duncan. Looks like they're going to give him the three-bagger there. As the carom got by Church and right. Church so good in right field. Last year, as Khalil Green fouls it off. So Duncan's got himself a couple of hits and four RBIs already today. And Green's got it. the Cardinals another run. The soft single to right field. It's now 6-0 St. Louis. Well, you said before, Kevin, they can score some runs and they're doing it today. Nice hitting by Green with two outs, deciding to play that team ball concept that Jerry Manuel's talked about in spring training. Just take a single, try to get a two-out hit to drive in a run, and he did. Here's Alan Craig, who's, uh, I don't know, you can get off to a much better start in spring training. Saw the numbers. He's five of seven with four RBIs. It's pretty good, huh? He's making a mockery of the game. It's so interesting that these names, or no names really, um, pardon the, the Craig, but early in spring training, you'll see these guys at the top of the leader chart. You'll even see them in April, guys that you've never heard of on top. But it, kind of the cream rises to the top in this game anyway. But love to get off to these kind of starts. Let your manager know that you can play. When you've got an 86 on your back, you really have to work hard to get the manager to notice. Yeah. One and one to him here. Cardinals again with two outs doing it. The Duncan three-run homer was with two outs. His RBI triple was with two outs. The RBI single with Green with two outs. But now there's three outs as Castillo finally ends the inning on the flip to Coronado. Cardinals tack on two more runs, though. They're up big on the Mets. It's Big East basketball on SNY. Rick Pitino's ranked Cardinals looks to continue their surge. They host Bobby Gonzalez's Pirates at Freedom Hall. Seton Hall at Louisville. Coverage begins with City pregame Wednesday, 6.30, right here on SNY. As Kyle Lose begins his third inning of work against Corey Sullivan, who starts in center field today with Carlos Beltran deported for the WBC, the former Colorado Rocky. And... You know, one of uh, really a bunch of guys, Ronnie, who are throwing their name in the ring trying to make this team. And so this is a perfect avenue for him to show himself. It really is. You see the players on the bubble here to try to sit on that bench. Reed, of course, got in that trade. Corey Sullivan, you said, from Colorado. Mo Martinez started second pace in the last game of last season. Makoviak, I really like, but, you know, he's a left-handed hitter. Will he find a place? I think more important, when you talk about Corey Sullivan, he's a guy that in Colorado they were so high on. Mm -hmm. Lots of speed, can catch it. you got to have a good center fielder in Colorado. His problem has always been, you know, wearing down. Uh, he's the kind of guy that can he play on the bench, or is he better playing every day? That's the big key. I mean, it's so competitive. Bobby Keelty's a switch hitter. He's not even switch hitting. No. He knows being a right-handed bat is the best chance to make this team. Well, if you look at it, here, here's the, what the bench looks like. You have backup catcher in Castro. Yeah. you got Tatis, if he indeed is not in a blood tune in left field. You've got Alex Cora, who are obviously locks, yeah. stock and barrel. I think Jeremy Reed's a lock, too. I do, too. Comes over in that trade. He's, he's other than Beltran, probably the best go-get-it outfielder. 
So that would leave, if that's the case, Ronnie, one spot. is one and two to Sullivan here. So you're looking at one spot, as we saw, with a lot of different options. You have another outfielder here in Sullivan. You've got Pagan, who's been great this spring and is a switch hitter. And Mets know him a little bit as Sullivan goes down on strikes. First strikeout for Kyle Loesch, one away. Uh, you know, you have obviously Marlon Anderson, who's got a guaranteed contract, by the way, and has slimmed down as a double in this game. A lot on the table here. It, it really is. Although, you know, Mar Marlon had an injury plague year last year, so sometimes you're wondering, you know, is he at the end of his rope? I don't think so. I mean, you, you don't lose how to hit if you're a guy like Marlon Anderson. The key is, though, can he play enough positions to help you out late in the game defensively? Let's say if you get in a certain game, and maybe Jerry Manuel thinks, even though he will be his everyday center fielder in Murphy. There might be some games that they have a lead and a late in the game that they want a, a real uh, adept outfielder to be out there in left field for that last thing. Sure. So. And that's where I think Reed comes in. Yeah. But then you say, okay, do you take another outfielder? You look at it. Tatis has worked this spring exclusively in the infield. And he's playing third base today for right. So, you know, I think what that tells me is there, you know, as Coronado grounds down to pool holes, two away. That tells me is that, you know, they they want him to be that swing guy, and especially a backup for a Delgado on right. So maybe they can afford to, to bring another outfielder into this mix now. That's a, that's a good uh, part of a great point. The point is this, is that they've decided that Wright and Reyes are not going to play 162 games every year. They're going to be more around the 150, so they can have some time off. They'll be fresh for September. Delgado, I think he wants to get him some time occasionally. But the thing about Delgado, of course, you can use him in the DH when you play the interleague games. But there's some left-handers that are very tough on Carlos. And maybe to give him a break in the, against those real tough left-handers, that's when Tatis comes into play at first base. Castillo now the batter with two down for the Mets here in the home third, trailing six zip. Kyle Loesch has been effective in his second start of the spring for St. Louis. And he's got a 1-1 on the way. And, you know, Tatis, uh, quite honestly, really surprised me with his defense last year. He played very well, really wherever he played. I mean, he played first a little, did a nice job. I mean, you, you can argue, Ronnie, who knows how it would have ended, but when he separated his shoulder in Washington, that was an enormous blow yeah. for this team down the stretch. Castillo gives us one to charge to center, but Raspis recovers to make the grab, and the Mets down in order in the third. Kyle Loesch has been sharp. Mets bat silent so far through three. Well, this was a scene on Sunday after the game. Mets departed for different destinations for the World Baseball Classic as clubhouse attendants helping David Wright and company pack in the trunk. Charlie Samuels. Stuff it in there, Charlie. <laughs> and they head into the limo, and away they go to the World Baseball Classic. And this camp is 15 players lighter today because of it. New pitcher for the Mets here in the top of the fourth. It's Dylan G. Well, he pitched well in his first outing here in spring training. He's one of those middle uh, round picks that they're so excited about. Throws strikes, gets a lot of ground balls. And to short Coronado with a high throw, and that's going to be an error on the Mets shortstop. No Jose Reyes today. Jose Coronado has got a great arm, just a little off target there. Well, he does everything you're supposed to do in this play. Fields it with the backhand, takes his time. But see how his arm dropped just enough to get that ball to sail, and Marlon not able to handle it first base. So the error gets the leadoff base runner for the Cardinals against Dylan G, and that'll bring up Joe Thurston, the second baseman. Thurston is a cousin of CC Sabathia. Used to, uh, in the offseason, hit against him quite a bit. I think CC will be taking him out to dinner from now on. That's a good bet. He better be. G really did a lot of nice things last year. He's not an overpowering type guy, but Mets officials love his changeup. I got to see him a few times in, in Brooklyn, not not last year, the year before. And he's he, he doesn't miss. He, he throws a lot of strikes. He's always around the plate. He's got four pitches. He pitches into left-handed hitters. That's something you usually don't see from a young pitcher. Mm -mm. That's foul back. He's not afraid of contact. He wants to retire you in two or three pitches. And, uh, you know, he won 10 games last year. Only gave up seven home runs and over 158 innings pitched. 
No, this is a guy that uh, knows what he's doing. Sometimes gets lost in the radar because you have all these guys that are 6'5", 210, throw 100 miles an hour, and they're always considered the guys that are, can't miss. Sometimes you've got to take a, a, a better glance at guys like this who know how to pitch. 0-2 to Thurston on the way. A little check swing. G adept off the mound. There's one. And not in time. Almost a nifty double play. Dylan G quickly off the mound. Converted the lead out, though. Well, nice job by G with the crow hop. The nice throw. Kind of vacated that second base, didn't he, Coronado? And watch how he leads. Good play here, though, by G. But watch Coronado. A little phantom play. <laughs> wow. But this is spring training, Kevin. That is an out. Always will be an out. That was like the uh, the goal line in football. As long as you, as you if you cross it, <laughs> it's good. Similar play. Well, you just have to look at it eight times before they call it good, though. Yeah. That's the only problem. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So the Mets get the lead out there and we go back to the top of the order where Colby Erasmus the top prospect for the Cardinals still trying to find himself this spring he's struck out seven times now in 22 at bats he struggled 0 for 2 here tonight G just misses the outside corner. I think what happens for these can't miss products prospects is that you know they know the time when they should have come up and sometimes they kept in triple a for one more year they suffer some injuries like colby did and then you go down on that pecking order a little bit and it hurts it stings and sometimes there's two ways to go about it you can either get on your horse again work real hard and show the manager that you're ready for to make that team or sometimes there can be, there can be some padding involved i'm not saying colby did that but you see that kind of stuff happen one one cut and a miss and a big cut and a miss off speed one and two to Rasmus. Take a look at the replay Ronnie. Yeah good change up there down and away from Rasmus. He's got all the pitches. He's got good change. Good fastball can cut it a little nice overhand curveball. And he's got Rasmus one and two with two runners on for the Cardinals and you know we were talking that the runner at second base was out Ronnie they they actually changed the call and, and called him safe here. So how about that. Well the second base umpire sees it CB Buckner. I don't think so. That's what it says in our car but I don't think it's CB. It's not CB. But um, CB is behind the plate. He didn't get the there's a memo that comes out. He didn't get it that spring training. That's an out. Just let it go. Yeah. <laughs> Look out broken bat but it's going to be in the center field for a base hit and stopping at third is LaRue. So the base is loaded now for the Cardinals. That's it. This is funny about spring training. And you can see when everything is going right with a young pitcher. You can say to yourself, boy, you know, he's got great talent. But this is an interesting little scenario here. He hasn't done anything wrong, really. He's gotten a ground ball that should have been an out, an error on the shortstop. He got another ground ball that could have been turned into double play. It wasn't. He just broke a bat for a hit and yeah. he got the bases loaded. Amazing, low. right? Yeah. Talk about how things can differ as Rocky Cherry warms in the Met bullpen. So really what it is is two errors in the inning, as you said, with that runner being called safe. And the base is loaded for Joe Mather, third baseman. He swings at the first pitch. Coronado diving to keep it in the infield. A little late at second, but he saves maybe a second run from scoring. Either way, it's an RBI single for Joe Mather, and the Cardinals extend to 7 0. And now a little infield hit. Nice play by Coronado to get to it, but too late, of course, to get that ball to second base. Runner does not even have to slide, Rasmus. Now Dan Warthen will just go out and make sure the psyche of Dylan G is okay. And uh, you talked about the scenario as a pitcher. You got to be thinking, well, okay, let's see. How's this inning gone? And still nobody out. Two errors, a sawed off bat. And Dylan G in some trouble. The Cardinals all over the Mets today. Seven to nothing. You know, just to, one final thought on Rasmus. You were talking about that top prospect yeah. and how you could go down on yourself and how you have to push to the next level. How hard's it got to be though in that spot when you, in his example, top prospect in the organization, killed it last spring, yeah. sent down to AAA. It, it, how hard? How do you, motivating yourself? Yeah, it's it's hard. It's a hard thing to do because you feel as though you belong in the big leagues and now you're wasting your time. Not only with the money you're making, but wasting your time with that bats and, and AAA where you feel you don't belong. Pool holes, a line drive shot down the left.
left field line with the bases looted, and that will score a couple. Albert Pujols going for two. He's got himself a two-run double, and the Cardinals' machine keeps on rolling. And this is not the time of his life for Dylan G. It's everything going wrong here for him. Tried to come inside, left it up, out over the middle of the plate. Of course, Pujols ready. Nice play by Danny Murphy getting that ball in so quickly. Danny Murphy, sorry. Let's see the runners advancing. And at this point in the game, because of the score, third base coach, of course, is going to hold the runner there and not push the envelope. We don't want to see an injury either. No. Starts out Ryan Ludwig with a breaking ball a little outside. It's 1-0. And, and, you know, now, as, as crazy as this inning has been, certainly it could have been over without it, without even a runner on. You know, now we'll see the, the mental in the uh, intestinal fortitude, if you will, of Dylan G and see how he responds here to try and get it going against Ryan Ludwig for the big cut and a miss. One and one. Some pitchers who throw a lot of strikes like G, one of the things they have to learn when they get to the big leagues is that they have to know when to throw a ball. You know, you got to have good control even to throw the ball out of the strike zone. You can get too strike happy sometimes because these guys at this level and in this league, you can throw your best pitch on the outside corner and they can cover. Yeah. So you have to know that when you've gotten that advantage, 0-2 or 1-2, that you can throw the ball out of the strike zone and make them chase it. Not always easy for guys who are so used to pumping strikes in there. A two and one to Ludwig here. Cardinals up nine nothing. They've got second and third, and there's still nobody out in this fourth inning. They've scored in every inning. Freddie Garcia started, gave up two home runs, four runs in two innings. John Switzer had his troubles, two runs in the third, and there you see Dan Warthen on the right, Jerry Manuel on the left. Just uh, wondering when the bleeding is going to stop, and it doesn't stop there. As G comes inside and nails Ludwig. Base is loaded. Well, 3-1 did not want to make a mistake inside, wanted to make sure he got it in, and he did. Pitch just got away from Ludwig. No intent there, but you know what happens. The intent comes from you just got beat by Pauls on a fastball in. You want to make sure be a little more careful. That's when you aim it. That's when you hit a bat. So here's Chris Duncan with the bases loaded. He's already driven in four runs with a home run and a triple, and he gets a fastball on the outside corner for strike one. Duncan showing he's in good form here today and a big spot for him here with an already nine run Cardinal lead. Oh and two now it must be something about this Redbird uniform they've beaten the Mets six straight in Grapefruit League action all five times last year beat him here last week. Two to Duncan, and there's that fastball trying to brush him away. A little look from Duncan out of G. That's yeah. a good pitch. You know, looking at these guys too, when you talk about intent and Ludwig and Duncan, they they could definitely start their own football team. I mean, with the with the size of these guys, and he goes the other way this time, and it drops in front of Murphy for a base hit. So Duncan, who pulled his first two hits, goes the other way with that one. It's 10-0 St. Louis. Well, good hitting from Duncan. We saw the home run to right field, but on a pitch away, he's able to go that other way. Hit a little off the end of the bat. Murphy gets it in quickly, and we're in kind of like a video game mode here. Base hit, uh, go to the next base. Next station. That's right. And amazingly enough, there's nobody out yet for St. Louis here in this inning. Already four runs in against Dylan G and Khalil Green, the new Cardinals shortstop, who's one for two, takes a breaking ball outside and low. Green coming off really a, a, a very rough year. Let's be fair. He had 213, struck out 100 times and walked only 22 times. He broke his hand at the end of the year. It was not a pleasant one. Looking to make amends, hits one high in the air to right, drifting over Church. Makes the play, and we're going to get a throw home here. This could be close. Nope. Pujols skates on in for the 11th Cardinal run. Well, nice hitting by Green now. He's driven a, driven in a couple runs, but I think that Cardinals 
only go as far as green plays. He is a very talented player who's come up short the last few seasons with San Diego. If he has one of those years that everyone thinks he can have, they will be a team to reckon with. You think he's that important to them? Huh? I, I, I think he's the most important. Really? Because they have a lot of the other pieces. I think their pitching certainly is a, is a piece, but they've always gotten good play from their shortstop position, whether it's Eckstein, et cetera, et cetera. He's going to be important to them. Yeah, they tried to replace Eckstein with Cesar Estorez and didn't work. Yeah. And, you know, you forget about Green. He, he did have 27 home runs a couple years ago in an impossible park to hit home runs. Alan Craig, the designated hitter. The Cardinals have batted around, and there's still only one out. That's been the type of inning it's been for them. And Craig, as he go around, he does. So it's one and one. And this whole inning started with an error on Jose Coronado, and then would have been a double play ball, but Dylan G threw high to second base, and then it just basically unraveled. Two holes for the two-run double. The fifth RBI of the game for Chris Duncan. And now it's one and two to Alan Craig. We've seen some games. Haven't we? Barton for St. Louis a couple days ago had six RBIs. Brian Schneider had five. Duncan five today. Some guys with some unbelievable offensive numbers here in spring training. Isn't the pitching supposed to be ahead of the hitting at this stage? It's supposed to be, but it doesn't always work out that way. <laughs> Hasn't worked out early. One, two, and that is foul. You know, I think it was much more like that, Kevin, when guys you would take a couple of months off or maybe three months off and start back in January working out and getting ready for spring training and then evolving into shape in February and March. It's changed now. These guys are at it for well, probably 11 months a year, and rightfully so. 1-2 to Alan Craig on the way and a hefty cut. Foul back. Let's take a look at this Cardinal team. They were 86-76, and 76, fourth place in the NL Central, and... There you see the losses. Brayden Looper, who really did a nice job for them converting to a starter. Aaron Miles had a career year last year at second base. They've got to fill that hole. And Ronnie, you mentioned Green is the highlight of what they added here this year. Good block by Brian Schneider. Two and two. Jason Isringhausen, by the way, is uh, in Tampa. He and Troy Percival are going to make up. Maybe a closing platoon for all I know. I'm not sure how they're going to use that duo in Tampa. There'll be an old AL West kind of closing machine out there, right? Yeah. When Isringhausen when was with Oakland. 2-2, and, two, two, and this one is drilled to center field and deep, and it's over Sullivan's head. This is going to clear the bases. Ludwig scores. Duncan comes to score. It's a two-run double from Alan Craig. And the Cardinals are an extra point away from going up 14. for Mets pitching today a lot of pitches in the middle of the strike zone and when that happens especially a team that's been as hot as the Cardinals here in spring training you're going to see a lot of those swings easy run scored with Duncan the second run coming in and teeth run for the cards Alan Craig is only seven of nine with six RBIs to start the spring he's, he's, he's ice cold he might get number eight instead of 86 tomorrow. Oh, no. <laughs> Might change. <laughs> Jason LaRue, he of the Fu Manchu at the dish. 0 for 2 with reaching on an error and a strikeout. Like this is where Hal McCray, the hitting coach for the Cardinals, he should sa sashay over to Tony the Russo and say, hey, Skip, where are we going to dinner tonight? <laughs> I've done my job today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 2-0 to LaRue, there you see Hal. 13 runs that say is your job when they're not even through the fourth inning. A seven spot here in the fourth for St. Louis. It's been one of those crazy innings the way it started. It could have been an easy inning for Dylan G, but a couple of errors and then the hit parade started. A lot of times with these innings, that's that's how it all unfolds. A tough walk or an error or a misplay, and it's 3-0 to LaRue, and there's a strike. I'll tell you what it feels like. I've, I've been out there. My first spring training with the Texas Rangers. Let's see the pitch count. I was facing the New York Yankees, 1982, and I had one of these innings. Can I tell you, your heartbeat is going crazy. Tapper to short, Coronado, two outs. Everything's happening so fast. You feel like you can't get anyone out as the fans react to this ruse out. You know, you don't you don't want to hang your head, but you also can't believe what, what just happened. That seventh spot came so quickly. 
but those things can happen. Do you, when the catcher throws out, throws down a sign, what's going through your head? <laughs> you think that's the right one? Because I don't know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Thurston, the second baseman, who's 0 for 2, reached on a fielder's choice and scored earlier in the inning. This is now batter number 11 in the frame for St. Louis with two down. And Dylan G, just one of those, just step off the mound when this is over and just forget about it. Organization still likes what this kid brings to the table. One and one. Royce Ring, the ex Mets, was with Atlanta last year. Another new Cardinal addition. We'll see him next. Cardinals brought, brought along a slew of left handers today. One one on the way. Healthy cut, one and two to Thurston. Well, Heath Bell and Royce Ring both went from the Mets to the San Diego Padres. Heath has really found a home there in San Diego, and congratulations to him. He found a spot on the USA roster yesterday, right? They put him on the roster. To G's 1 2 on the way, a little low. You know, I think Bell, you know, everybody, you know, kills Omar for that trade. And you know what, though? I. I just don't know that he was going to do what he's doing in San Diego and New York. Sometimes guys just need to change the scenery. So true. You know, he's been great out there, but I, I don't know. Maybe if he got more of a chance here, he would have, but I'm not so sure. This should finally end the inning, and Luis Castillo puts it away. The fans cheer wildly, but 11 come to the plate. A seven-run fourth for St. Louis. They're up there. It's 30 minutes of what matters the most to you, the Mets, Yankees, and all things New York sports. Get all your latest sports news, highlights, and analysis on Geico Sports Night every night at 10 and 1 a.m. right here on SNY. Kyle Loesch beginning his fourth hey. inning of work here, and he'll face Fernando Martinez, pinch hitting for the pitcher's spot here in the home fourth inning with the Mets trailing by 13, and he gives this one a ride to left, but Duncan is there, one away. Well, that's what Duncan's changed in Loesch. He was one of those guys that used to go out, want to strike out people. He liked to throw his four-seamer and then a breaking ball. He took that four-seamer almost away from him, went to a two-seamer, tried to get some early ground balls, which he did much better last season. I think he only gave up 18 home runs. He was a guy that give up 25 to 30 home runs a year. So he's kept the ball in the ballpark. He's working quicker, doing all those things that make you a better pitcher. Well, you talked before about, um, you know, not being afraid to pitch to contact. And I guess he's the type of thing. Same type deal. He's he's not trying to be that guy to blow you away anymore. As Murphy, nice easy swing, will off one in the outfield. Murphy takes a big turn, and he's got himself a single. And boy, you just love to see him keep doing that. Well, this pitch is down and away. If you're a pitcher and you see that on the video later, you go, boy, that's where I wanted to throw that pitch. But the thing about Murphy is that he has great plate coverage, and he takes what the pitcher gives him. That'll bring up Fernando Tatis, who had his first at-bat of the spring back in the second inning, grounded out to second base. Tatis had a bruised hand, so he had missed time until today. But finally has that feeling back to normal of course ended last year with a separated shoulder diving for a ball in Washington did not require surgery uh, decided just to let it heal on its own and, and it did they played some winter ball which was good too to show the Mets that he was fully healed and ready to go I think what he brought to the Mets last year and correct me if I'm wrong he brought some hunger didn't he when he played I mean you could just see it in his play that he was so happy to be back in the big leagues but also hungry to show what kind of player he had been and what player he could be again and uh, it was just evident every single time he took the field well Jerry always talks about in the spring how he used to get on the quote gangster bus to go with the B team to the road games or the split squad games and you know he said Tatis's swing was so long he's like how you know how is this guy going to hit the ball and as spring went on working with Hojo he started to shorten it up and shorten it up and make more contact and I think at first Ronnie it was a nice little story and then it turned into wow this this guy's back type thing well if you don't forget last spring training he came to it almost at the end of spring training and won a team literally in, in a week 
with saw, his play. Saw Hojo there on the screens. Done a lot of good things with a lot of these players here. Breaking ball and it unscrews Tatis there. He's going to get ribbing for that one. This is a Ruthian swing right here from his heels. What I say about cutting down that swing? <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't it. Not on that pitch anyway. <laughs> <laughs> little, little long on that one. Oh, Joe used to swing like that occasionally. Oh, admit it, Sheik. Admit it. And when he connected, it went quite a long way <laughs> as well. <laughs> one and two to Tatis here with Murphy on first. One down, home fourth inning. Fastball just misses inside. So it's two and two to Tatis. Ryan Church waiting on deck here. As Loesch is final, final inning of work to short. Green, nice play on the run. The first, that was ill advised. But Tatis will remain there. A oh, nice play by Khalil Green to convert the out. We talked about it before. This is the kind of talent this young man has. Tough play in the hole. Throws on the run. Perfect strike to Thurston. And he covers a lot of ground. He can be a smart player. Has lots of tools. Has the ability to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Never has. I don't think. Never put together the kind of season that people think he can. Maybe he'll do it here in a Cardinal uniform. Yeah, you know, I talked to him before the game a little bit. He's really happy to be with a change of scenery. We talked about change of scenery. He was really excited to play. He said, I always love playing there as a visiting player. He said, I can't wait to play there now as a guy on that home team. As Ryan Church takes strike one. Well, St. Louis, I will tell you, uh, even though it was always difficult times in the teams I played with against the Cardinals because they were so good. Yeah. One of the best baseball towns oh. in America. Yeah, I mean, and they support that team like no other. 0-1 Church, fastball's high. I always feel like you're at a Nebraska football game or Oklahoma football game. Everyone wears red at the ballpark. <laughs> Pretty cool scene, actually. Yeah. And they, they never boo. I mean, they never boo their players. And, you know, some thought with Green that just that Petco Park mentally defeated him, if you would. 1-1, one, one, line drive, base hit, Ryan Church. Tatis, big turn. He's going to try for the extra base, and he's going to have it. So the Mets have runners at the corners with two away, and another base hit for Ryan Church. Well, good hitting here by Ryan. That ball down. Ryan, a classic left-handed hitter that he likes the ball out over the plate and down. And that's where you want to see him hit that ball. You don't want to see him pull it because that'll end up on the ground. Shoots that right over the second baseman's head. Good hustle by Fernando Tatis. And I think Kyle Loesch has about hit his pitch limit, so he's going to come out of there with two down. Pitching change to the Cardinals as Royce Ring comes on in the game. He'll take the ball, and we'll take a quick break. Mets try to get on the board when we come back. And trying to get the Mets on the board here as Royce Ring comes in to pitch for the Cardinals. But you can see his numbers with the Braves last year, 42 games, also pitched in Richmond. But here to show his manager, La Russa, can he get a left-hander out in a situation with guys, runners on first and third? Certainly not a big situation with the score like it is, but he knows that he's bringing in Ring to face one of the premier left-handed hitters off the bench in the National League. And we're talking about that bench, and here's Marlon Anderson, who's in great shape with a double his first time up, and chance here for himself more in the good graces. If, he's in, if he even has to do that. I think the one thing about Marlon, Ronnie, we had the discussion about the bench and the battle for positions. I think one thing where Marlon has an edge over everybody, he knows how to pinch hit. Mm. And you can't teach that. Guy, guys are good or, or they're not at it. I mean, that's just how it is. They know how to get ready. Inside. I always thought that Marlon last year, and I think a lot of it was because of the injuries, became overly aggressive. And, uh, you know, I hate to use this phrase, but it, it, almost like they, he got himself out, you know, in, in the at-bat. Didn't let the ball kind of come to him. Didn't let the pitcher come to him. And all that knowledge and intelligence that he has about screen, but pinch hitting, he was able to use. This one, Rasmus has lined up, and the inning will come to a close. So the Mets threaten, but they fail to get anyone home here. We've played four tradition field, all St. Louis. 
latest info from spring training with exclusive video, original features, and in-depth blogging on SNY.TV, your online home of all things New York sports. Or you can just watch the games, too. That, <laughs> that works. But for additional coverage, actually, they've done a great job with their website. All the video on there, the blogs, got every blog you could possibly want to read. Mets blog with Manny Cerrone and others. As Colby Rasmus will take his fourth at bat here in the top of the fifth inning. Mets have a new pitcher. There he is, Rocky Cherry. You see his numbers with Baltimore last year. He's been in 40 big league games in his career. So he's trying to find a role maybe with the Mets as a long relief man in that bullpen. Terry, a Rule 5 guy uh, from the Baltimore organization, so that means if he doesn't make the big club out of the spring, he's going back to Baltimore. Well, the hard thing to judge are the numbers when you have a, a pitcher that pitched for Baltimore. Not a great team. They play in the American League East, so they're facing the Yankees, the yeah. Red Sox, now the Tampa Bay Rays. And, you know, Ronnie, as... Uh, a little outside of Rasmus 1 and 2. Valerio De Los Santos warms up the hard thrower. I, I think, you know, too, when you talk about the Rule 5 draft, it's so much harder for a team, and, you know, take this the right way, but it's so much harder for a team that's trying to win a championship to, not that they're all not trying, but to take a Rule 5 guy. And the example is a couple years ago, the Nationals took Jesus Flores off the Mets. That's right. They were able to do, he was, he didn't belong in the major league. young year, catcher. But they, they weren't a very good team. And now he's, gonna, he's turning into a good player for them. But it's harder for a team like the Mets to have a guy like this make the team. What you're trying to say is that uh, the, you have to be a kind of team that can afford to play with a 24-man roster for the Correct. entire year. I mean, that's what's going to happen. Two-two to Rasmus on the way. Marlon Anderson's got the chance, and there's one away. For the Nationals after having that brilliant first campaign in 2005 where they 81 and 81 but the first half they had just an amazing season and now uh, boy it's all come undone after getting the new ballpark the new ownership um, things of course that have been in the paper and the resigning of Jim Bowden the GM and this is a shot Mather deep left Murphy going back and he can't get it it's over his head off the wall stop at second and this boy has some power Murphy couldn't get back there in time so another base hit for the Cardinals their 11th these are going to be the toughest plays for Murphy all season long is that he's going to have to work on the going back on that ball because guys who play in the infield and go to the outfield they can come in on the ball they did it in the infield they can go right or left they've done that also it's the one straight over the head where they have to take their eye off the ball run to a spot and pick it up again those are the things that uh, are, are learned from playing outfield for many seasons and they're trying to really have Daniel learn it so quickly now and I guess in essence, it's actually a good practice for him here in the spring to have balls like that where he can go and get it here. How can you beat that? Well, you can decide that, especially against some teams that might have a lot of power, let's say Ryan Howard's up on the left side or um, a big right-handed hitter, you might play Murphy a little deeper and give up the single as opposed to ball over his head. Tyler Green pinch hitting for Albert Pujols here, by the way. Cardinals starting to empty their bench, their bench just a little bit. And it's 0-2 to him here quickly against Cherry. Two to green. It's been all Cardinals here today. 13 to nothing over the Mets. Cherry's 1 2, and he got him. Came inside, and Tyler Green can't catch up, so two outs. Cherry gets the strikeout. Well, that's a good pitch there. Sinker inside. See the bottom drop out of that. That is a good place to pitch right-handed hitters because they like the ball up when it comes inside, not down. So that'll bring up Brian Barton now for the cards. 
we'll see what he's done. He had the two homers and six RBIs in one game on Sunday, and he also had a single and a triple in yesterday's game, the loss to the, to the Rays. So one, of the, one of the league's best threats. Yeah, yeah, can't, argue that. Too. can't argue that. <laughs> Does he have to wear, you think, a size bigger helmet no. to fit those in? Absolutely. Like an Oscar Gamble helmet from the 70s, right? You know, it's it's interesting. It's hard to talk about anything real positive when the Mets haven't scored anything and they've given up 13 runs. But, you know, watching Snyder in there for this entire game, this is such a, a departure, Kevin, from last year, right? When he had all the injuries. We watched him on. He never played on this field. He played in the other fields. And yeah. even more importantly, he never caught a lot of the Mets pitchers. They're trying to change that this year. Yeah, you know, I was talking to Sandy Elmore Jr. Uh, earlier today and just talking talking about what a, what a different feel is for Schneider with the health and everything else for him and feeling comfortable a second year in New York and with this team and he said as a cut and a miss by Barton he said I'll tell you one thing too this year we've made a concerted effort for him early in camp to catch all the relievers everybody because last year he said spring training got through he barely caught the relievers a he wasn't healthy enough when they finally did get him into games and it just didn't work out so it's a much different feel for Brian Schneider he looks comfortable at the plate in the spring He's, he's familiar with the pitchers and he's catching the ones he's not. And the other thing is this one goes by Schneider. It'll be a wild pitch from Cherry and taking third base is Mather on that one. I think the other thing is too, and I remember we talked about this during one of the games last year. You remember he had the troubles early on with the drop balls and the pass balls? He, he switched glove makers. And Sandy actually caught wind of it and said, what are you doing? Yeah. You, you know, that's yeah. your hand as a catcher. <laughs> you got to go back to your old glove. And when he did, he didn't really make too many mistakes the rest of the year. It's almost like a pro golfer who switches clubs because the other club company is going to give him a little more money. Oh, yeah. yeah more. You don't know what was involved. Yeah, sure. no, I'm not saying the money involved. But sometimes when they do that, they can't fire the shots anymore. Yeah. They can't play those irons. Sounds like a good idea. You know, the whole big thing with Mickelson switching to Callaway's. He went through that whole thing and couldn't hit the ball sure. for a while. I, th I think with, with Brian, uh, you made the good point, Kevin, is that if you're not familiar with the pitchers, then you're on your heels as a catcher. Mm -hmm. He is a very aggressive kind of catcher, the kind of guy that's going to go out and, and block pitches and, and do his job. But if you're on your heels, you, your real talent can't flow. 2-2 two, two to Barton on the way here. And this one to short. Coronado fires first, and the inning is over. So Rocky Cherry allows the one hit, but no runs for the cards. A daily feature of the training camp of the New York Mets here at Huggins Field is the press conference, sometimes more than one press conference per day. And the subjects being interviewed right now are George Weiss, the president of the New York Mets, and Donald Graham, the chairman of the board. Press conferences that usually draw a little bit more people nowadays. How, how, how great is that video from 62 as you see the media core? The media core I sit with before the games, they don't have a, a suit and tie on, do they? No. No, you never see that. But um, that was in front of Huggins Stengel, where the Mets used to train. It's where the Yankees originally trained, uh, trained during the Ruth and Gehrig days. But literally, it was just a small house that had been gutted, and all the lockers were against the wall all the way around. There was one small room where all the clubhouse kids would sleep. I think they had three or four bunk beds in there. It was, it was awful and beautiful at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if you go in there and the conditions were as bad as bad could be, but you were sitting where Ruth and Gary sat. You were sitting where all the early Mets sat. And uh, you would have these 10 o'clock games against the Cardinals. The Cardinals and Mets were both training in St. Petersburg. And you would go out there and watch the game. And George Hendrick, who used to play right field for the Cardinals, he would come in if he wasn't up and just sit on the stairs in front of that house so he wouldn't have to run all the way back to the hotel. He would just sit there and then we'd go back out in the field. So it was a great place to train. Never forget. That's pretty neat. Two and two to Brian Schneider leading off here in the home fifth inning. Royce Ring remains in the game for the Cardinals. They made a couple of defensive switches too. As that one misses. Cardinals have a new catcher in the ball game. Matt Pagnazzi he is in there. And then a short Tyler Green's in there. Schneider down to first base where Alan Craig is in there for Albert Pools over to the pitcher. One away. Half power number 70 playing second. Tyler Green at shortstop. 
Wholesale changes, baby. Brian Barton comes in and right. I think we covered it. <laughs> These are, I think. This is always the most difficult part, right? Keith oh. and I are doing a game together, you know, on the 27th. Yeah. I want to make sure I'm up here when, oh. the, when the changes occur. And don't tell Keith who comes in. Talk about a comedy of errors that's going to be, but we can't wait to do it. It'll be fun. Oh, it's going to be awesome. What date is that again? Uh, the 27th. Now, my question would be, is uh, is Gary here? Is he in is he in Port St. Lucie for that game? Uh, he is in Port St. Lucie. He said he's going to walk from watch it from the truck. I think he should direct or something like that. We that, should we should all change roles. That, that'd be great. You that'd know? be great. Corey Sullivan with the 2-0 count here against Ring. Lefty lefty matchup. Ring paints the corner. I don't know. Keith doesn't like authority very much. I think he's going to take direction from Gary. That'd be a tough road, I think. Probably not. He, he, Probably not. It's Webby or bust. He's yeah. not taking it from anyone but Webby. That's a good call. There's a strike two and two. It would be fun to watch, though. As for me, maybe I'll go serve nachos or something <laughs> during the game. Change it up. They do have those tacos and a helmet here, which are really good. I could serve yeah. those. Yeah. Did you ever have one? I, ha I haven't had any of the food here. Gary swears on the big turkey legs. I don't know if they still have those. I ate one of those uh, my first year here. See on the backfields. Guys getting instruction with the step camps. You like Davis, Mets number one draft pick in the forefront there, number 32. You do a lot of that on those backfields, a lot of instruction. Over to second base, Hop Power makes the play, and there's two down. Do a lot of standing around, but for a lot of these kids, they all come from different programs, or you might have some kids that have signed as 17, 18 year olds that have not gone through a formalized program, and there. Pitchers fielding practice, PFP. And it's so nice because it's so small now because of that step cam. It's only the 20 guys. Yeah. I mean, really almost personalized instruction. Some of the eats here, I don't know what they're eating. Something in a box <laughs> here in Port St. Lucie. As Jose Coronado will take his second at bat of the game. With two down and no one on in the home fifth for the Mets, Coronado granted out to first his first time up. Just want to tap her to the left side. Tyler Green, not in time. Not in time for Tyler Green as Coronado beats it out. Well, this was going to be a tough play for Thurston anyways. He let it go. It looks like he let it go for Tyler Green. Good strong arm, but good hustle by Jose Coronado. And those are the kind of things you like to see, to tell you the truth. Bang, bang play at first base. It's 13 to nothing in this game. Yeah. Young man still hustling. And Coronado should get a pretty good look here. Double-A player and with Reyes gone, he'll get some opportunity to show what he can do. Now Jose, Jose, make that Luis Castillo back to the top of the order. The other leadoff hitter. See, I'm thinking one hitter and <laughs> not even looking, and that's what's going on. Castillo takes ball one. He's 0 for 2 today. Hasn't had a hit his last few games, so looking to get back on the horse here. 3 for 12 this spring, taking strike one. One's in the dirt. Coronado will jog to second. Wild pitch from Royce Ring. As we see Jess Todd, highly thought of prospect for the Cardinals. We'll get to take a look at him in the next inning. Right now it's Ring's turn. Came in relief of Kyle Loach, who pitched three and two thirds for the cards. Pitched well today. Two one on the corner. Two and two to Castillo. Look at these drills here. That's showing them reaching down for the ball in case there's a ball in the dirt and getting in position to throw the ball to second base. Castillo. I think he caught it on the air. No, Tyler Green picks it off one hop and he completes the throw to first anyway. And the inning is over. Mets leave a runner on. We're through five and it's all Carl. Visit the official online shop of the New York Mets at Mets.com. Browse the largest selection of authentic spring training gear, including clubhouse caps and T-shirts, jerseys, sweatshirts, and more. Get your spring training gear straight from the source. Shop the Mets shop, Mets.com. 
Check out the backfield and catching drills going on. Those guys Fundies. work so hard with all that equipment on. Although they've got a nice cool day. A lot of times down here it's 90 degrees. Makes it awfully difficult. Chris Duncan still in the game for the Cardinals. I guess maybe he's going for the cycle. He's got a home run, a triple, and a single. And, well, he's got another base hit. Chris Duncan is four for four with five RBIs. What a day for the Cardinals left fielder against the Mets' new pitcher here. Valero de los Santos is one of those guys that has always had a lot of promise. He had some really good years in 2000, 2001 when Milwaukee would appear in, you know, 60, 50, 60 games. His problems, as you see right there, and just a small snippet with Colorado last year, 11 walks, 10 strikeouts. We'll suffer with thrown strikes occasionally. Here's Jared Hoffpower takes outside and low ball one. And he, he throws hard, Ron. I mean, he's 36 years old. He still throws the ball very, very hard. It's it's all control with him. <laughs> it reminds me of a little bit, if you want to, you met fans that watch the NLE so closely. Raniel Pinto, who pitches for the Marlins, that was De Los Santos um, a few years ago. A guy who could throw really hard. Uh, Pinto has emerged as being able to throw more strikes. Uh, De Los Santos, though, has always had, like you said, that great arm, goes after hitters. He just has sometimes almost too much movement. Yeah. So he's getting an inning of work here for the Mets in a Cardinal blowout. Just one of those wacky days. You see a lot of these games in the spring. Top down to third. Jose Valentin, the nice backhand on to second for one, but that's all they'll get. Oh, nice play by Jose Valentin to record the lead out there. You said it right, that backhand, short hop, throw not his best, but nice play by Castillo to not throw the baseball. You see a lot of young second basemen will proceed and throw that the first, but the veteran with the good play, Castillo with the out. And now Alan Craig, who is on fire this spring. You see the game he's got today, a double and a home run and three driven in. Six RBIs in nine spring at bats if this was an ncaa basketball game march madness be a lot of guys with triple doubles here right <laughs> really filling up the scorecard yeah it's one of those days for the cardinals and that is hit a country mile to left but it is going to be a foul ball this guy's got some power wow i mean he's <laughs> he can hit the ball Carlos Muniz getting loose. Get a chance to see him in the ball game next for the Mets. A little high, so it's one and two to Alan Craig. Talking about the World Baseball Classic earlier. We show those pictures of David Wright getting into the limo and heading over to Clearwater. I'm reading Mike Vaccaro today in the New York Post, and his article made me laugh because in the Team USA clubhouse, David Wright, Derek Jeter, Jimmy Rollins. So it's almost as if Jeter is the buffer between the <laughs> NL East. That's right. What do you think that, that dynamic's like? You think, I, I know both players respect each other a lot. I know the trash talk is a lot more for the papers. It's just could be two. Castillo to Coronado on the first. That's a double play. So Valero De Los Santos gets the 4-6-3 double play and he keeps the Cardinals off the board. Mets looking for a run of their own when we come back. Weeknights at 6, Adam Shine and Chris Carlin raise the volume on the latest from the Mets, Yankees, and all things New York sports on Loudmouths. Weeknights at 6 only on SNY as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Jose Valentin will get his first at bat and he'll face one of the highly touted Cardinal prospects. The righty Jess Todd is in the game. Well, how do you know that you're having a good summer in the minor leagues? You go to three different towns, which he did. He worked through three different levels in the organization while getting their minor league pitcher of the year. They're very high on Jess Todd, a former Arkansas Razorback who once struck out 17 in the SEC tournament game. So has that pedigree starting of being one of those bright young pitchers for the Cards. He's got a live arm, that's for sure. Todd, a second-round draft pick out of Arkansas in 2007. More work for these guys. They just don't stop. I mean, they've started now. They get there at 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. 
and still they're there at three o'clock in the afternoon. It's a nine to five kind of occupation for those young guys trying to get in this surrounding. Yeah. They don't want to be outside the building. They want to be inside the building. I think what's you know what's what's nice for them in this World Baseball Classic setting with all these guys gone as Valentin takes on the corner for a strike is that I think you're going to get to see some of these young guys in these games. You know the other day Ronnie when uh, you and Gary were calling the game and I was out talking to Reese Havens and Brad Holden guys like that. You know I think it's what's neat for us and for the fans is we may see them on this field during these games which would be really cool. And you know about the great players and Wright and Reyes and Delgado and Beltran and how they're going to do. But you like to see those prospects. That's what spring training is all about. Valentin down to first in play for Craig. One away. We were talking before we went to the break about the World Baseball Classic, and I, I wanted to get your take on what you think the dynamic is between Wright and Rollins. And, and I know the trash talk is a lot for us and for the fans. And I know they respect each other, but I would have to think it's still going to be a little bit weird. Well, I, I think, uh, yeah, it might be weird, but I think I equate it a little bit to an all-star game. When you're all of a sudden you're next to the guy you've been going against all season long, and it's really easy to become friendly because you're still talking the same game. You're talking about sure. baseball. Murphy gives this one a ride to center. Rasmus has got it, two down. And I think the way it's run, Kevin, uh, innately makes everyone on the same page because you're playing for your country. So if you're not playing, that's fine. You, we know we're trying to put out the best lineup possible. So um, I, I think it, it gets everyone on the same page. And it's also, you know, it's, it's what, a, what a moment for those guys to wear the uniform of where they come from with an opportunity to be world champions. Maybe not World Series champions, but world champions. And on the flip side of that, Jose Valentin, who made the out to start this inning as Cancel takes the ball. You know, I asked him about that. And he said, look, I I would love to be playing for Puerto Rico, and maybe someday he'll be coaching. Cancel rips one down the left field line. That's going to be for extra bases. Robinson Cancel has himself a double. And he said, but you know what? And obviously, Valentin's a long shot. You know, he's, he's got to have a lot of things break to make this team. But he said, you know what, in the same token, I love it because I'm going to get a lot of opportunities to hit, yeah. to play different positions, and, and get a chance to make this probably more of a chance now with all these guys gone. And don't forget, even though you might be in camp with one team and you're playing, there's about 30 guys down there from different organizations that are the great scouts of the game, and they're watching every single player. And if some guy goes back and says, hey, listen, I watched Valentin play today. I don't think he's in the plans of the Mets. you you got to give a call to Omar and see if we can uh, – Finagle something to get him over because he's perfect for our dynamic. Mets looking for a run here. Down 13 zip. Ryan Church takes ball one, and now you see pickoff attempts on the backfield. Well, you're just teaching young pitchers that when the guy moves at second, you step off. You don't, you know, trying to stop them from the balk that happens usually for young pitchers. Church is one for two today. He's hit both balls hard. He got a single his last time up, and he hit a bullet that Kyle Loesch made a great play on in the second inning. You know, the, explain things that can go really wrong in this because there's a lot of players, just like any kind of business, there's people that are paying attention and people who are not paying attention. It's just the nature of the beast. But there used to be a pitcher who came over from Oakland over to the Mets called Billy Taylor. Six foot eight, right-hander through submarine. That was the Izzy trade, right? The Izzy trade. In Oakland, Ricky Henderson's on second. We're doing a drill where Ricky breaks, and you get off the mound, and you run at Ricky, and then throw to one of the bases that gets in a rundown. Well, with Ricky, it's different because he was so fast, and he could outmaneuver you that you didn't run at him. He kind of just got rid of the ball, give it to the, the infielders, and let them do it. Church foul. So Billy and I were having a, a small argument, and he said, no, you have to run right at Ricky, get him to move one way or the other, and then throw to that base. I said, you do that with almost every other runner, except Ricky Henderson, because he's so fast. He'll just outmaneuver you. This guy rushed for 2,000 yards a year in high school football. Well, we argued about it a little bit. Play came to him. He rushed at Ricky. Ricky gave him a deke. Out for the season with an ACL. <laughs> Taylor, out for the season. Are you serious? So those oh. are the kind of things that could happen. Wow. I guess you won that argument. Well, I didn't want him. No, not he like that. Guy. Wow, that's incredible. That'll be uh, the Mets' third baseman in the eighth inning. <laughs> he doesn't have a hat. Charlie. <laughs> Charlie Samuels. We need a hat big enough to fit that head. 
Church watches it sail outside. Good patient at bat by Church here. He's worked to a full count against Jess Todd. All right, we talked about the bench a lot today. It's been a big theme. Talked about Marlon Anderson. What about Robinson Cancel? Could yeah. he make the team and have Castro as an added bat off the bench as Church very nicely draws a walk there? Well, well the, the factor you have to look at is that Ramon Castro is so talented, um, but you can't use him off the bench if you have only two catchers. So he's either going to start or he's not going to appear in that game. Right. If you have three catchers, then you can use that, that good bat and that power bat of Castro late in games. So that's a good reason to have three catchers. And we've seen Jerry in the past just in the short time now that he's been with the Mets, he likes the three catcher uh, platoon kind of thing because it allows him to use Castro. And they, they like Cancel. He, he played well last year. Marlon Anderson, the batter now, and he hits this one in the air, left center field. Rasmus ranging over, and it falls in between. Cancel will score. Church will stop at third. And I don't know if that was miscommunication between Rasmus and Stavon Noah or what? But somehow the ball fell in and the Mets are on the board. Well, what happened here is that it was supposed to be Rasmus's ball, but see how the left fielder does not back away? And he's also about 6'4", 240 out there as a left fielder. So Rasmus comes up a little short, and that's a play that you don't want to see your center fielder make. You want him to yell, take charge, and catch that baseball, but he kind of just shied away at the very end. and. You know, a, a little mistake, a big mistake there that can't sit so well with the manager. And they're going to give an error on Rasmus on the play. So, I wonder if it's a base hit and an error on that play. Is this one by McCoyak giving a ride? Rasmus drifting back. And he's going to make the play, and the inning is over. But the Mets get on the board. They got a long way to go. It's 13 to 1, St. Louis. This copyrighted telecast presented by Authority of Sterling Mets. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and description to this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Sterling Mets. Back at Tradition Field, some changes for the Mets. Michelle Abreu takes over at first base for Marlon Anderson. In left, Rob McCoyak, who drilled one to center. That last at bat stays in for Murphy. And then Angel Bagan comes in in right field for Ryan Church. And we got a new pitcher, too. Familiar face, Carlos Moniz, a little toe to the rubber here. Well, he was really on that Triple A to the big league shuttle last season, appearing in 18 games for the Mets. Moniz with that. It's a four-pitch pitcher also. Doesn't throw that hard. Good fastball sinking action with a slider and a changeup. get a look at Matt Pagnazzi. The son of Tom Pagnazzi who gets a chance to get his first at bat here in the game against Carlos Muniz. Again another reminder on how old I'm getting because I played against his father Tom for many seasons. <laughs> good catcher. Good guy. Runs in the family. Charlie Manning warming up for the Redbirds coming in the bottom of the seventh. Cardinals just came into this game with the bats ablazing as they scored three in the first, one in the second, off Freddie Garcia, who allowed two home runs, four runs in his two innings of work. Again, his curveball was good. His fastball, he struggled with it. And then they got a couple of John Switzer in the third as Pagnazzi skies one. And Bray will watch it go in the stands. And then Dylan G just had a rough inning and a couple of errors and then the house kind of caved in from there as the Cardinals scored seven times in the fourth inning. And uh, that's it. The Mets got their run last inning, which, by the way, the Marlon Anderson was indeed a double. They flashed E8 on the board. That was not the case. So it was an RBI double from Marlon Anderson. He's happy. He's got two doubles. Today. That's right. Two hits. And that's where we stand here in this one. As Pagnazzi leading off the seventh against Carlos Muniz here at Tradition Field. on the way and 
and Pagan will have his first opportunity against the wind and the sun, and he makes the catch. One out. Kevin, I was trying to be brave there, but I finally had to go to the jacket. Now you, I don't know how you held out for six innings. I've had it on since inning one. I know everyone at home doesn't want to hear me talk about it because they're under two feet of snow, but man, it's a little chilly. There we go. They're cold. I walked out of uh, a little uh, screened-in porch and where we're staying down. Yeah, yeah. And uh, walked out this morning just to kind of test the temperature. Yeah, I wasn't out there for long. <laughs> it was in the high 30s, I think, this morning, which is rare for down here. I know. I've got my dogs down here. So it was at like 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning. I'd walk them. Now it's becoming more like 9.30, <laughs> But it heat up a little bit. She's keeping score even with the blanket on. Good job. I'll tell you, Thurston gives one a ride to deep right. Pagan going back. This one is back there, and this one is gone. At the home run for Joe Thurston. His first hit of the game. The Cardinals keep pouring it on. It's 14-1. to one. Just a fastball up in the strike zone there by Muniz. And usually here in right field at this stadium, Tradition Field, it's hard to hit home run to right field, but the wind, although it's freshened up, they have just hit the ball so hard, they've hit it through the wind. They've, they've driven it right through to right field. We had a bunch of those home runs to right the other day. And the Cardinals taking advantage today, although one home run, the Chris Duncan hit it off Freddie Garcia. I think would have went out in a hurricane. That was <laughs> such a shot by Duncan. who has got ridiculous power as it is. And the Cardinals continue to pour it on. And the Mets offense has been the one that's been doing all the scoring this spring, but not today. You've been the person that's been, well, not the most, but of all us, you've been the person that's been the most in City Field. Do you think it's going to play bigger than Shea or equal to Shea or smaller than Shea? I think it's probably going to be about the same. Okay. I think I think there's two things. You know, I know there's a big scoreboard that's blocking a lot of the wind from Flushing Bay. Okay. But the concourses are all open. I haven't been in there one day where it hasn't been really windy in the park. Okay. Uh, that and the fences are very tall, and I think that's going to play a part as well. That's a good good job by our guys in the truck see the comparison it's, it's pretty comparable actually but I don't know when I stand in city Ron it actually looks bigger if you can believe that maybe it's the height of the walls I'm not sure well I, I think also you know at Shea at the old Shea of course he kind of had it uh, uniformed all the way around kind of like it's here at tradition field and that's going to be different, of course. Uh, there's going to be a lot of different angles at City Field. There's going to be uh, different places to, to place the ball. So, you know, a guy like Jose Reyes is going to love it. He's going to hit those line drives that are going to go for days that are going to be only add to his triple count. Oh, no doubt. As Muniz strikes out Colby Rasmus two away. We've got a field back here, field number two in the Mets uh, complex here, which is designed just like City Field, as a matter of fact. Yeah. The dimensions the same. The fence height's the same. It's right back beyond tradition field. That's the field. See the big wall in center. And they do a lot of work with the outfielders out there, just hitting balls in the gap so they can get used to how far they're going to have to run. You know, Carlos Beltran's going to have to figure out, you know, where can he flat out fly to go get a, a fly ball or, or place he has to be more careful. David Freeze will have an at-bat here. First chance to see him this spring coming off an Achilles injury and available for the first time today. And so he gets his first chance against Carlos Muniz. He takes a slider for a strike as Tom Morton warms up in the pen. Tom and the taxidermist have been a big story down here, haven't they, Kevin? We um, we had a conversation about that on the other other day with the wild boar in his locker, and he was very amused to find out today that I said on the air the fact that I learned with that turkeys have vision of 320 degrees. <laughs> he was ecstatic that I got that into the broadcast. Well, very nice. Did you know that? Uh, I, I don't know anything. I'm, I'm deathly afraid of hunting. I come from a hunting family. I'm uh, afraid of guns, and I've, I've been chased by wild boars, and it's not a fun thing. No, no. Carlos Moniz, nice finish to the frame there. He strikes out the final two batters. Time to stand up and stretch. 
Step into the future today. Get your 2009 Mets season tickets at City Field. Take a guided tour of the Mets' new world-class home. Get a Mets.com or call 718-507-TIXX to schedule your special City Field season ticket tour. Operators are standing by. And I want to remind you, tickets for the Red Sox games at City Field, the exhibition games, they go on sale 10 a.m. this Friday. Single tickets, single game tickets for April and May, they go on sale on March 15th. And if you saw the Big East opener at City Field, St. John's at Georgetown <laughs> sold out in 45 minutes. Nice. So people are anxious to get in City Field. New picture for the cards, Ronnie. Well, this is numbers with Washington last year. He was claimed off waivers in October of last season by the Cardinals. And another lefty test for Corey Sullivan, who gets a little brush back there. Sullivan 0 for 2 in his starting debut here in center field as more action for the Cardinals. Trey Hearn getting ready. A little blooper by Sullivan. This is a tough one. It's going to fall into left field. Corey Sullivan has his first hit of the day. A leadoff single for the Mets here in the seventh inning. And that's We'll bring up Mr. Coronado for the third time. Oh, well, Ronnie, drama on the backfield. The pitching machine uh, apparently broke. Well, that's the curveball machine that Keith was talking about the other day, that Jugsy that has the two tires, and it's throwing the curves to these hitters, and maybe they're doing the drill, right? The 80 curveballs in a row, you have to swing at every single one Looks and like try to hit it the other way. One of the pitching machines just broke when we went to break, so they were... Uh, skillfully got the new machine in there. Well, for you old Met fans that started the beginning, he's my hero, by the way. Al Jackson was throwing some batting practice to the pitchers today and firing it in there. I mean, still, I don't know how old Al is, and I'm sure he doesn't want me to mention it, but, boy, pretty impressive to watch him throw BP today. He's in good shape. He's yep. still in very good shape. He says he loved hitting off that curveball machine. Probably didn't, wouldn't have loved it if he had to hit 80 straight. <laughs> if you could hit like Keith, you could hit off any machine. That's a good point. <laughs> you know what? Excellent point. 0-2 to Coronado here. Manning's a little high with the heat. Supposed to get uh, even warmer here in Florida as the week goes on. Be into the 80s by week's end. And hopefully... You all back home continue to thaw out. Weather brutal this morning back home. Icy cold, roads conditions were brutal. Wow, a fan caught that in his hat. Very nonchalant, Ronnie. <laughs> He's got the preppy gear on, the hat. Whoop! Flips it out there on the left side. Tusks in the pocket, no problem. His, 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 uh, his Q rating, the street cred with the girlfriend went up high, too. Well, because he didn't try that hard. He yeah. just kind of <laughs> stuck it out. If he really, like, lunged, but he just kind of... I got it, it. Yeah, no problem. Coronado goes down on strikes. So there's one away here in the seven for the Mets, and we go back to the top of the order, and Luis Castillo is still in this ball game. He will get his fourth at bat here, looking for his first hit today. He had that... Big debut in Fort Lauderdale for the spring opener. A couple hits the next day and hasn't had a hit since. So looking to get back on track and maybe Jerry Manuel cognizant of that here. Yeah, probably give him a whole day. It means probably get a day off tomorrow. Mm -hmm. He was on the other field uh, endlessly taking ground balls from Sandy Alomar Sr. Almost to exhaustion. Seems like not only do they do it offensively with that curveball machine, but even defensively get these guys' legs in shape in the infield. Speaking of legs getting in shape, ring jogging on the track. In the sunshine, here in the shade, it's a little chilly. I know. A lot of people back in New York just said, shut up, Kevin. <laughs> I get it. I'm sorry. Sullivan off first on his base hit. Now Castillo waits and watches, and it's three and one. <laughs> Got the reverse jacket on. Got to get in the sun. How about the dedication, though? Yeah. Rather than leave, do what you got to do to stick around. 
And Castillo patiently draws the walk. So that's up something going here against Charlie Manning. Two on for Jose Valentin. It's funny because here's Valentine, and it seems like every time you talk to him or we talk about him, you always talk about what a great manager he's going to be. <laughs> but, you know, having a laugh with him today, he's like, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to play. Yeah, don't push me into so, it so quickly. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate that. But, uh, you know, let me see what I can do here. And he's, he's had a couple nice plays the last couple days in the field at the base knock yesterday. Grounded out to first his first time up today. A lot of guys leave in different ways, right, Kevin? They'll leave when they just feel like they don't have it anymore, and some guys want the uniform ripped off their back. I think uh, Jose is from the latter category. He's got a 1-0 count here, and a slider hits the outside corner. Well, Valentin's so savvy. I mean, you know, you, it's certainly no disrespect to his playing because he's had a great career, but guy that owned a team, owned, owned his team in Puerto Rico, player manager on the team. I mean, he knows every aspect of the game. Part of what makes him so smart on the playing field. A couple ducks on the pond for the Mets here. 1-1. One, one. And a big part of that at 0-16, that team that against this Cardinal team came one game away from having a magical, they had a magical season anyway. But, you know, it, it ended against the Cardinals, who would eventually become the world champions. He played a big part in that. He did. A 2-1 breaking ball hit high in the air to center. Rasmus doesn't have to move much. And he hauls it in for the second out. Oh, bring up another switch hitter as Angel Pagan will get his chance now with two on and two down. You know, Pagan, in my eyes, is almost a forgotten man in yeah. the spring. You think so? Well, I, I think what happens is that, you know, the, the difference is that the manager's different, right? So one manager might view Pagan in a different way, and I think also Pagan last year a lot like Ruben Gotai, one of the reasons he didn't make the team because his strong side was from the left side. One of the reasons Pagan made the team was because he was a switch hitter and he was stronger from the right-hand side, and they needed a right-handed bat to kind of work in that lineup. Well, you bring up an interesting point. You, know, you talk about the new manager. So with that said, and I know Jerry was here. He was on the staff. What is what does what he did last spring and early on before he got hurt, what does that mean now for him in this camp? I think it should mean more, but it doesn't really yeah. seem to mean as much. And uh, But that's the nature of this game. And that's an interesting observation, Ronnie, is this one gets by the catcher so the runners will advance because you would think it would mean more because, you know, he did kind of prove himself a little bit, and now he's really got to do it again. But well, what has happened is that uh, smooth number 25 has leaped, leap, leapfrogged over him as far as the left fielder. So when you decide, and Jerry has said, and we'll see how kind of year Murphy has, when you decide that a player now becomes an everyday player, then your needs go from left field, they go to infield, they go to different outfield needs. Sure. Meanwhile, Pagan just watching here is Charlie Manning having trouble throwing strikes. There you see Daniel Murphy, and see he's got that book. We talked about this the other day. He's, he's got the Delgado fever, writing down everything, every at bat, every pitcher. I mean, he's not in this game, but he's still charting what he did and what probably what Charlie Manuel's do, uh, Charlie Manuel, Charlie Manning is doing too. The guy he could face this year. Does he get <laughs> <laughs> Look, the difference between the people seated in the shade to the sun. It's called disbursement. <laughs> Left side, it finds a hole, base hit. Angel Pagan drives in one, he drives in two. That's a two out, two RBI single for Angel Pagan, and that'll help the cause. And the Mets tack on a couple runs. It's 14-3. Well, good hitting here by Angel. That ball on the outside part, able to pull it through the hole. Once it gets through there, of course, straight to second base with that from the left fielder. Two runs for the Mets, two more. And Ronnie, you're right, he's better from the left-handed side, but he still is a right-handed hitter. Yes. 
So every one of those sure goes in the memory banks. Can't sell the batter. This one to short. Tyler Green inning over. But the Mets pick up two on the Angel Pagan two run single. We're through seven. Cardinals up big on this day. The veteran lefty Tom Martin is in the game for the Mets. Get a chance to see him out there and see what he can do trying to make this club. Well, he's pitched with six different major league teams, that being the Mets, one of them, 14 games. Here trying to make it as that other left-handed reliever. One of the good guys, by the way, played with the Long Island Ducks. That's Buddy Harrelson's team. Yang Nam Choi warming up in the cards pen. Just signed a couple of days ago. He's South Korean. We'll get to see him next for the Cardinals. As Tyler Green swings at the first offering from Tom Martin, and he likes that. One pitch, one away. That'll bring up Brian Borton. Tom Martin, if I recall reading a story on him, he, I think when he was back with the Mets back in the day, there was actually, I think he's the guy where he was in a picture of the paper in Newsday and they flipped the negative and he was actually a right-handed pitcher. <laughs> a right-handed pitcher in the picture. I had a baseball card that came out and they had to change it that showed me throwing left-handed. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's how significant my career was. But uh, that's... Uh, <laughs> Funny how that happens. Spartan, two home runs this spring. You always look forward to that as a card collector, though. I mean, they always yeah. look forward to those. There's always like those mistake cards, and you always look forward to getting those. By the way, Louis Castillo finally out of the game for the Mets. <laughs> Andy Green comes in to finish this puppy off. People always say that, you know. Boy, when you become a big leaguer, it's got to be the greatest. You know, you have your own baseball card. How does that happen? As you see Kyle Snyder warming up for the Mets. You know how it happens? One day in spring training, you have to get your uniform on. You have to go out around 7, 30, 8 o'clock, and they have a row of guys that are taking pictures, guys and young ladies that are taking pictures for the different companies, Topps, Don Russ, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you go down the row at 7.30 in the morning. Hopefully you got enough sleep the night before so you don't feel real bad. And you just go with each person trying to get, come on, smile a little more. Come on, look like you're throwing the ball for literally an hour. It's a drag. But when it comes out, your parents and friends and everyone appreciates it. So it's not the glamorous thing that you would think it would be. Brian Borton goes down on strikes. Too quickly away from Tom Morton. Did you did you enjoy seeing your own baseball cards? I mean, did you, did you look forward to it? I, I, did the ones that were correct? I I, I, mean, I did. I, I really did. And, and to this day, my parents, oh, and my mom, collected all of them. Has them in a little book. And and my sons always get kind of a big kick out of it because it, boy, it just. You know, it's a chronicle of your, of 15 or 20 years sometimes of, of, of your life. It's your resume. I'll, I'll never forget the one, because uh, sometimes they would take action shots. So I'm pitching in uh, Fenway Park, first time after pitching the 86 World Series. I throw a two-hit, two-nothing shutout. The last play is a ground ball to McGuire. He fumbles, it throws in the dirt. I have to dive and tag first base and get the out to seal the shutout. What a great moment, right? The shot is of me lying on the ground in the dirt in Fenway Park. Come on, that was a card? That was the card. Me lying on the ground. <laughs> that sounds I was like, you got to be that, kidding me. That's the best thing to do. <laughs> uh, Ron Darling, sleeper. <laughs> Literally. Exactly. Nick Stavanoa has got a 2-2 count on him from Tom Martin, who's looked sharp here in this inning. It's another one of these cardinal guys that is uh, uh, imitating a, a tight end. Chris Duncan, Mather. You know, the Jets just signed Bart Scott. If they needed a more linebacker, I'm sure the Cardinals can oblige. <laughs> That's right. Down to third where Valentin makes a nice glove work. Nice pick and throw, and the inning is over. Well done by Tom Morton, a one, two, three inning. Bottom eighth we go. We go to the bottom of the eighth here at Tradition Field. 
in Port St. Lucie. Kevin Burkhart, Ron Darling along with you and the Mets trailing 14 to 3 and we'll get our first look at not only Michelle Abreu who gets his first at bat but for the Cardinals they have a new pitcher. It's Yang Nam Choi who they signed literally two days ago. Two days ago in a tryout. I mean he tried out also for the Twins years ago and was signed by the Twins. So here's a guy that has had a dream pitching in the big leagues and won't let it go away. That's good. Kind of a funky delivery. Straight over the top. A lot of breaking pitches you'll see from Choi. Breaking ball sails away from Abreu. It's two and one. Some action in the Cardinals bullpen. Brad Furnish and uh, who's the other guy throwing there? I don't know. I, I, I don't know who that is. Do we have a number for that? 88. There's a strike as Michelle Abreu goes down. So one away. I'll bring up Andy Green. Andy Green will get his first at bat now of the game. Coming in for Luis Castillo. And the fastball is strike one to Green. That's when you know it's spring training, when there's just a conversation going on in right field while the game's going on. <laughs> a couple of Cardinals convening out there. What do you like for dinner tonight? Yeah, me too. Good call. 0 oh 2 to Green here in the hole. Breaking balls just outside. So you look at the Mets this week. Obviously, Cardinals today. They're in Vieira tomorrow to take on the Nationals. And then they're home for a game against Italy as an exhibition for the World Baseball Classic. A little chop shot down a third, but it's foul. Okay, it was my job to get uh, Sean Garceau, and finally we did, number 90, the right-hander. Happy Webby. <laughs> <laughs> See, what happened is my, you know, my, my rookie mistake with Gary not here, since I didn't know who it was, Webby was going to show it until I figured it out. So thank you for bailing me out. Because <laughs> he would have just continued to show it until I knew who it was. It's called compounding. Yes, indeed. Piling on. <laughs> Green hanging in. He's worked a full count here against Choi. So the Mets play Italy here on uh, Thursday in Port St. Lucie. It's a 2-10 start. And then Cardinals in Jupiter Friday. And then our next telecast will be against the Nationals here on Saturday. Green draws a walk. He was in the hole 0-2, but he comes back and fouls off a couple and gets himself to first base. I don't know if I like Italy's chances. Their best hitter is a coach. Their hitting coach is Mike Piazza, and I know he's the best hitter on that team. <laughs> right? Hard to argue that, yeah. Ronnie. I gotta, I gotta be honest. I didn't, you know, when they were here, they played uh, on the on the backfield the other day. I don't know. Robert Fick was Italian, to be honest with you. He's on the team. Well, I, it, it goes back what? It can go back to your grandparents, or I'm not sure what the ruling is as far as coming from other countries and playing for other countries. Koyak skies one to left. Stavin Noah. Triple, triple, somebody triple. <laughs> you hear the audio. I'm not sure where it came from, but uh, obviously a player hater. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't work because Stavin Noah makes the grab. Two down for Sullivan now. Yeah, I'm not sure the uh, criteria. Frank Catalanato on the team. He can hit. He can't hit. He's, he's not with Toronto, is he, anymore? No. Where'd he go? I don't know. Season. I can't remember. I'll have to look that up now. Strike one to Corey Sullivan. Sullivan's one for three. He's got a single and a run scored here in the ball game, getting the start. A chance to show what he can do in center field. 
Jeremy Reed getting a break today. Probably we'll see some action wall. This one hit right at Bort. And the inning is over. Nicely done by Yang Nam Choi. Mets go down without a run. We go to the ninth in Tradition Field. New York Mets baseball on SNY brought to you by City. And by Harris. And by Geico. And by Verizon Wireless. As we welcome you back to Tradition Field, we go to the ninth inning now, and we'll get our first look here at Kyle Snyder. Well, Kyle Snyder from Riverview, Florida, but went to the University of North Carolina. You see his numbers with Boston last year. Started his career in Kansas City. One of those high draft picks, good arm, has just never found his way. You know, he's pitched well in the minor leagues, and once he's gotten his shot in the big leagues, hasn't always worked out for him as he's trying to get a shot here with the Mets. So Snyder will face Jared Hoffpower to start things off, and he starts them off with a breaking ball away. Well, the Mets spring training record will dip to three and three, if you care. No one really thinks about those things once the opening once opening day rolls around. Okay. It's never the record in spring training. It's how you play. Yeah. You know. So if you you know, if you lose a few games, that makes sense. Remember, when you get into the middle games, and it's different now because it's World Baseball Classic. A lot of times you have a closer will pitch the third inning, so you won't even have that guy to, to, to end the ball game. So you lose some games late. It's really how you play as an offensive unit, how you make adjustments. How you compete out there, you know, fundamentally, are you sound? Are your pitchers throwing strikes and working quick? Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of things you want to see in spring training. And so, look, if you just turn on the game right now and you see it's 14 to 3, look, Cardinals had a big offensive day. Chris Duncan went crazy today. He had four hits, five RBIs. Story of the day is Freddie Garcia. That's the bottom line. It's half power to yeah. walk. Freddie Garcia went two innings and well, he struggled again. He, he allowed two home runs, he allowed a three run shot to Chris Duncan. That was just a shot. He allowed a solo shot. The next inning, he did recover in that second inning to finish up strong. But I wonder, you know, if you're Jerry Manuel, Ron, you know, when you when you sit down after you meet the after you meet the media, and yeah. what are you thinking about right now with Freddie Garcia? Well, I think that you do what any manager does, and that is that. If they don't do it at night over dinner and a steak, they'll do it at their meetings. Herbert, Herbert, Herbierto Ruelas. Boy, I butchered that one. That's a tough one. It's a tough one. The um, they'll do it over, you know, they'll do it over dinner. They'll also do it over in meetings. And it's a player evaluation, and it's one of the talents of people in baseball. It's one of the talents in scouts. It's one of the talents for general managers to be able to evaluate talent and say, hey, this guy still has it, or this guy doesn't have it, or all those things that, and they're tough decisions to make because it's a people's business. There's a scout, some yep. of the scouts here. And it's hard to make those kind of decisions on uh, people's lives. I mean, that's what you're doing when you're saying that you might not want a, a player to be part of your team. But they're made every day, and they have to be made. And yeah. it's a tough business. If it wasn't, everyone would play. And, you know, now, uh, Levon Hernandez will start the game tomorrow in Vieira against the Nationals. So it's kind of, you know, Garcia has served, and now Levon Hernandez has to return serve. And so, you know, we'll have to see how Levon looks tomorrow, certainly, as this one is skied a mile high from Alan Craig. And Corey Sullivan makes the put out. You know, if Levon goes out and pitches well again, well, then Freddie Garcia's, uh, you know, in the rearview mirror. You know, and, and, and keep again in mind, Tim Redding is very much in this team's plans. He's doing well. He's throwing the bullpens now. He's targeting March 8th. Yeah. Although the Mets won't give that, that hard date just in case. But he's very much in this team's plan. So, you know, again, in all, you know, we talked about the effect of Redding. You know, if Levon goes out tomorrow, and let's just say who 
shot foul. Let's just say for argument's sake, Ronnie, that, that he struggles. Yeah. Redding comes in a leg up before he even pitches anything. And it also gives Nice another chance to yes, atone for, you know, a difficult first start. And, you know, it's only one for the young man. And, and I'm sure he feels more pressure in this camp than he's ever felt because he got a taste of it last season. And once you get a taste, you don't ever want to wear a minor league uniform anymore. You want to be in the big leagues. Back up the sh up the box and Schneider under the legs there. So a couple runners on here for the Cardinals and a 14 run 14 hit attack for them today as Pagnazzi gets on. That'll bring up Joe Thurston. And and if if everyone falls flat on their face, which I'm sure it's not going to happen. There's too many guys involved. Tony Armas has just came into camp after clearing some visa problems. I believe he had. So there's a you know a veteran established guy who's shown that he can pitch in the big league. So there's a lot of answers to be made for that fifth spot. But you know what? There's a lot of teams out there that are trying to make decisions on three, four, and five. The Mets are lucky that it's only one slot they're really looking for. But why do they have these many guys? And people are out there saying, well, why would you sign these many pitchers? Oh, you know, you don't play, need that many. Play. Well, John Main is coming off an injury. You know, you want to make sure that, you know, Mike Pelfrey continues his great play next year. But if he stumbles a little bit, that you have enough to, to bring someone else up. A little poke to right from Thurston. And Hoffpower is going to come around third and score. RBI single from Joe Thurston. Run number 15 for St. Louis on this afternoon. The Cardinals not giving up playing, that's for sure. Well, you know how at the end of spring training that they uh, have the players run around the bases for conditioning? The yeah. Cardinals are not going to be they've, not doing that today. They've done it. <laughs> it's already done. Well, uh, you know, you bring up the argument, why did the Mets have all these guys for one spot? Um, I'll give you some names. Jose Lima, Jeremy Gonzalez, Brian Lawrence. You could go down the list. Bottom line is they've, had, Knight. they've had a lot of injuries the last couple of years, and they've had to dip into the minors. And even if these guys don't make the team, the thought is they're going to need some guys at some point. And that's been Omar's thinking, signing these guys. Not only great competition for this spot, but, you know, guys that – you know, that don't necessarily make the team or whatever the situation would be. You know, there's, there's always, unfortunately, injuries in baseball. So, covering the bases here. Slow ground ball. Green's got to hurry, and he does in time to get Colby Rasmus. You know, Kevin, there's also a, a small part of that where, you know, different players want different results. There, there might be a pitcher who has a couple of bad starts and is told, hey, we don't think you're going to fit in the plans. Well, if you don't like me, let me go now because I can try to make another team, okay? There's also going to be a guy that has pitched well, who's a veteran pitcher, who's late in spring training. Maybe Jerry Manuel will go over and say, listen, I don't see you coming out of the camp with the team, but I like how you're thrown. And, you know, go down there and be ready, and, and you will be back here sometime this summer. Those are all the decisions that, you know, veteran player, any players have to make, and the organizations have to make with them. And, and let's face facts. It's a, it's a good point. And when you consider, you know, just the guys in the competition for this fifth spot here, as Snyder gets freeze to go fishing, he's in an 0-2 hole. Tyler Heron warming for the cards. You know, what's to say, you know, what's to say Levon or Garcia, one of those guys, a, a veteran with a, an excellent career, ends up going down to AAA if they don't make the team. That, you know, you, you talked about all the adjustments early in the game that Garcia's got to make. How about that as an adjustment? Yeah, well. To, to say, okay, I didn't make the team, I'll go to AAA. I mean, I would think that's got to be a hard to swallow at some point. Hard to swallow, but it's easier to swallow with the Mets because you know this is a championship team. And what I mean by that, they have the talent to win their division. They have the talent to, to go to the postseason if everything clicks right. If you're a veteran pitcher, you'd rather be with a team than the Mets than going with a team that has no chance at the postseason. Valentin hauls it in in foul territory. And so the Cardinals are done in the top of the ninth. Last chance for the Mets. Bottom of the ninth coming up. Last chance saloon for the Mets here. Bottom nine at Tradition Field. It's been all Cardinals today. 15-3 they lead. And 
and they send out their final pitcher of the afternoon. Tyler Heron gets a shot. From Wellington Christian High School here in Florida. Loves to surf, so you can go up to Cocoa Beach from here and get some surfing in. But uh, one of those guys last year made 27 starts in the minor leagues, was seven up, seven down, and trying to convert him to a reliever. And so Jose Coronado will get a chance to turn around against the lefty here. Excuse me, that lefty against the righty, that is. Coronado, one for three. He's got a single on three trips today. And did make an error in the field, but the Mets like his defensive ability out there. And we'll get a chance to see him more now with Reyes at the World Baseball Classic. One, two to Coronado. A little outside. Jeremy Reed waits on deck at his first at bat of the game. He'll pinch hit coming up next. Two two on the way. This one hit in the air, right center. Brian Barton makes the play. One down. So here is Jeremy Reed, who hasn't really played at home much. He's had a couple of pinch hitting up opportunities here at Tradition Field, but has gotten his time in, in the road game so far. And I imagine with Sullivan starting today that he would be making the trip to Vieira tomorrow to play the Nationals as he takes strike one. He's a Long Beach State guy where they have a lot of the fine college players. Brother Mark is in the Cubs organization as a catcher. The 269 last year for Seattle, 286 at bats. <laughs> Talking to him today about the adjustments of spring training travel, Ronnie. <laughs> He said the bus trips here, a little longer than I'm used to out in Arizona. Arizona is so easy as far as the Cactus League. It just, you get on a bus, you very rarely travel over 40 minutes, 45 minutes. So definitely tougher here, but I enjoyed Florida spring training better than Arizona spring training. So. Reed goes down on strikes, last out for the Mets, it's Valentin. Why is that? Uh, it, very, very dry weather, really hard to sweat there. And it's always, maybe not today, but it always it's pretty humid down here in Florida. So you always felt like you went out there, you did your running, you did all your stuff, you had a good sweat work, you felt like you had a good day at work. Didn't always feel like that in Arizona. I mean, they didn't have the retractable dome over the workouts like Chase Field, is that what you're saying? Right, that's right. Last chance for the Mets, Jose Valentin takes an 0-1 upstairs. There you go. 0 for 2 since coming into the game for Fernando Tatis who played his first game of the spring with that bruised hand Tatis didn't have a hit but did run the bases just fine after reaching out a fielder's choice and he strokes this one foul hey is that the picture you're telling me about, Kevin? You missed it the other day, Ronnie. I but think he was chowing, right? The he other was, day? Uh, he, he plucked a large catfish out of the water and swallowed it whole. It was awesome. Line shot for Valentin. He's got a base hit. I'm say Valentin looking pretty sharp this spring so far with a two-out single. Yeah, we turned to Discovery for about 10 minutes during the game of the day. It was pretty awesome. We'll get another at bat for Angel Bagan. One of the bright spots, a two-run single in this game for the Mets. There it is, Ronnie. Check it out. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's a glutton. <laughs> He's smoking that fish. I just like, I just want, I just want to know, where do the bones go like, when it gets done digest? What happens there? I don't know. I don't know enough about the Discovery Channel to know that, but I know he's satisfied. Wow. Look at that. He's showing his wings. Cool shot from our cameras out in the outfield. There's a kind of a little creek right beyond the stadium. 
apparently is stocked with catfish. Well, in the days we used to run out there, there used to be a path they used to run. I don't think the players do that anymore. But there was a path that used to wind all around that little inlet there, that little river. But you'd always have to take a sawed-off bat with you because of the alligators. You're always afraid to get <laughs> running on top of one of the alligators. It's always encouraging, yeah. right? Young player, don't forget, don't forget your weapon. <laughs> exactly. We got one of those on camera. Was it last year or the year before? It's really not that far from the ballpark. It's like right, right out there, but they they tend to stay near the water. Easy for me to stay in the elevated press box. <laughs> Well, you can have one of those, too. There you go. Beware of the alligators. You can have one of those, too, Kevin. It just costs you about twenty-five ninety-five here for a long tray of catfish. Very true. I won't. I don't think I could swallow it quite like that heron did, <laughs> uh, to be honest. Two-two just misses. Begon stays alive here. Good shot out there, fellas. Heron deals outside, ball four. So the Mets refusing to go away. And that'll bring up Robinson Cancel. Reminds a little bit of the other game against the Cardinals last week. Cardinals had a huge lead. Mets, uh, was it 9-3 that game? They got it to 9-8. Had uh, runners on base. Well, the big hit late in that game, of course, was we've been talking about the fifth starter, but we've also been talking a lot about the bench. It was Bobby Kielty. Yeah. Did a three-run home run in that game. Mets need a few of those to get back in this one, though. There's Kielty. Big red. These are one of these games where invariably one of the announcers will be silly enough to say, if the other team comes back, I will walk home to St. Louis. And it happens, and then someone has to walk home. Yeah. It was the Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, I believe it. Jim Rooker was one of the announcers. And it was a game that, you know, 11 to nothing, 11 to 1. He said, if the Phillies come back and win this game, I'm walking back to Pittsburgh. Well, they did. And he ended up doing it in a nice way. He ended up doing it for charity. So oh, he raised cool, enough though. money for his walk from Philadelphia to Pittsburgh. I will not say that, by the way. No. One two to can't sail on the way, and he watches that sail outside. Good patient at bats here in the Mets, you know, down, and down by such a big margin to not throw any at bats away. Jerry Manuel has got to be pleased with what he's seeing here from his guys. Single from Valentine, walk from Bagan, two down, two two to Cancel, who calls time here. When you're Valentine, Pagan and Cancel can't afford to give away anything because they are battling. The backs against the wall kind of spring training for them. Heron's two two, right back up the box, a base hit. Valentine will come round score. Mets are not going away here. At least without a fight, Cancel with a two-out RBI single. And the Mets have their fourth run of the game. How about Cancel with a double and a single and an RBI today? You're looking for bright spots. Marlon Anderson had a nice day starting at first base, a couple of doubles and an RBI. Well, here's a kid. Well, I wouldn't say kid. He's the guy that got his career started late, but Brayu and was always impressed with his at-bat, with his bat anywhere he's gone. He could hit. Question for him is fielding-wise, but he could certainly hit the ball. And you, know, you talk about making an impression to make the team, or if there's a call-up for him, it might not be any of those, but it could be next year. Yeah. So you're always looking to put a positive here, and he strokes one to left. Foul ball. Just goes foul. Despite the fans' pleas for the fair ball. Yeah, people always say, they say boy, it's got to be tough when you're a ball player and you have 50,000 people booing you. Never bothers you. These are the tough days because <laughs> there's only a few people left <laughs> and every single person you can hear as clear as day. Yeah. So if someone's getting on you, you will know what they're saying. We've heard the conversations, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> One one to Abreu here. Pop up right side. This could do it. Craig. Nope. Sales into the stands. Diehard fans giving credit. Hanging out. 
down to the end of this game here. Even though most have left the shaded seats for the sun. I think I would have done the same. One two to Abreu on the way. Bender and it got him. Strike three. Nice pitch by Tyler Heron gets Abreu looking and the ball game is over. So the Cardinals come to Tradition Field and hand the Mets a 15 to 4 loss as Freddy Garcia takes the loss with his two innings and four runs allowed. Mets hit the road to Vieira. Our next broadcast is Saturday against the Nationals. For Ron Darling and the entire SNY crew, I'm Kevin Burkhardt saying so long. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you next time.